The Lee County Board of Commissioners um, will begin its meeting at this time. Uh, I'd like to call on uh, Commissioner Oldham to lead us in an invocation and then followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, if you'll all join us and stand. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we thank you for this moment, Lord, to bow in your presence. We pray that you will guide us in our service to our fellow citizens. And Lord, we pray that what we do will reflect our love for you and our neighbors. Bless these proceedings, Lord, as we go forward. We pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Got a big crowd this evening. Welcome. Greetings to you all. It's nice to have you here with us. And uh, we got a full agenda. We'll go through it. And some of you from time to time may feel it uh, appropriate to leave. And uh, we'll certainly give you that opportunity as a part on the program is completed that you were particularly interested in. Um, <clears throat> at this time, in the interest of some of our spectacular youth, 4-H'ers, uh, and uh, a, a special proclamation that we would like to uh, have heard and accept as commissioners. I'd like to ask um, at this time um, Bill Stone to come forward with the young people that uh, are going to be involved in this presentation. Mr. Stone. Mr. Chairman, Lee County Commissioners, thank you for allowing us to be here with you tonight. Uh, this year in 2009 we are celebrating and recognizing uh, the 4-H centennial year. 4-H uh, turns 100 and um, all throughout this year we've been doing some various uh, events to kind of recognize and promote that uh, in Lee County. Um, what we've done here tonight as you may have noticed and hopefully you had the chance to sample some on the way in, uh, we had some of our 4-H centennial ice cream which was voted on um, by 4-H'ers across the state as the number one flavor of 4-H ice cream. It's called Campfire Delight and it uh, is a graham cracker flavored ice cream with marshmallow and chocolate chip pieces. So it's kind of like a s'mores as you would at a campfire. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed that while you came in. Um, that was just a fun little thing that we wanted to, to offer you um, uh, to show you thanks for the support that you give us um, year in and year out. So we'd like to thank you for that. Um, as you can see behind me, we've got um, some representatives from our 4-H clubs and some of our 4-H leaders as well. Um, and at this time, I would like to uh, call forward Alyssa Neal, who is a member of the Rock and Riders 4-H club. And Alyssa is going to read the proclamation uh, recognizing 4-H Centennial um, in 2009. Very good. North Carolina 4-H, North Carolina Centennial Proclamation. Whereas the 4-H program began in North Carolina with the following of boys corn clubs in 1909 in Hertford County under Agent I.O. Schwab, whereby boys learned how to improve production methods to grow corn on their farms, and whereas girls were, were introduced to, into the 4-H through tomato clubs in 1912 under the direction of Jane S. McKimmon, where, whereby the girls' tomato clubs were interest were interest in home activities and the sale of canned tomatoes brought in extra money in. Whereas African boy, African American boys and girls in 4-H programs in North Carolina were <coughs> segregated in 1965 and was administrated through the North Carolina A and T. State University, whereby boys and girls learned how to grow vegetable gardens and poultry and to supplement their family diets, and whereas the North Carolina 4-H Youth Development Program that we know today involved out of these other programs with the motto, to make the best better, through the wise, effective use of the 4-Hs, representing head, heart, hands, and health, and whereas North Carolina 4-H members 
and their families have made worthwhile contributions to the citizens of North Carolina and this nation. And whereas through its 100 years of existence in North Carolina, the North Carolina 4-H development program has reached more than 1.5 billion girls and boys with the educational and de developmental programs that have contributed significantly to the quality of for, for these young people and their families. Whereas there are, there are 248,000 youth currently enrolled in North Carolina 4-H and more than 20,000 adult and teen volunteers who make this program possible. Therefore, if you resolve that in 2009, this was designated as the centennial <coughs> anniversary of 4-H in North Carolina, and that the 4-H, North Carolina 4-H Youth Development Program be re recognized and commended for its 100 years of helping the youth develop passion for lifelong learning, valuable leadership skills, self-confidence, and service to the people in the state of Lee County. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Elissa, for that uh, reading. Uh, that was quite a quite a challenge. Um, I believe it's uh, we celebrate what you are about, what you're doing, and uh, we we're very grateful for uh, your leadership and uh, and and showing the way for so many youth and so many uh, rural youth who have uh, a rich history with the 4-H organization. Um, I believe perhaps a um, motion would be in order for us to designate uh, this year as the centennial anniversary of 4-H and approve this resolution. So so move, move, so move. It's been moved and uh, do, uh, are all in favor? Please indicate so by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It is approved unanimously and we thank you again for coming before us. Uh, thank you very much. The uh, next item of business um, will be joint uh, public hearings with the Lee County Planning Board. And we have, this is in two parts. And uh, the first, uh, both of these will be um, led by, uh, let me, hang on just a second, Althea Thompson. Um, and she will take us through first the um, rezoning request by Jerry Atkins to rezone uh, property uh, on the Jefferson Davis Highway. I'll leave it to her to uh, describe this to us. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Chairman Hayes, Board of Commissioners. As you stated, Jerry Atkins have filed an application to rezone property at 2912 Jefferson Davis Highway from Residential Agriculture District to Highway Commercial District. The lot is a double lot with 100 feet of road frontage on Jefferson Davis Highway, which is a public street, and 100 feet of frontage on Knott Drive, which is a private street. It is approximately one half acres in size, and it is currently vacant. The property is the same as lots 32 through 35 of the Knott property subdivision that was developed in 1946. Utilities on the lot includes an existing public water service line and a private sewage system. The adjoining properties to the north, south, and west are zoned residential agricultural district and they are developed with single family dwellings. Properties to the east and then east of Jefferson Davis Highway are zoned residential agricultural district and highway commercial district with the primary land uses on that side being commercial. The subject property has been the location of several car lots <coughs> over the years. I think it was Hardy Car Lot and Stanley Auto Sales. The use was operating under a non-conforming or grandfathered clause, if you will, after the adoption of countywide zoning in 1990. <coughs> the lot has been vacant for several years now. When a non-conforming use is discontinued for consecutive period of 180 days, only a conforming use may occupy the site. Thus, that's why the applicant is seeking the rezoning. The petition lot is located along a commercial quarter 
and a major thoroughfare. Simmons Siding, a commercial business, is located approximately 200 feet south of the subject property, and there are other commercial uses in the area, again, um, along US-1. Some of those uses include convenience stores, motels, uh, Azure pools, Dale Greenhouse and gift shops, and Tramway Flea Market, just to name a few. The current zoning district of residential agricultural is intended for very low density residential and agricultural uses. The proposed highway commercial district is established to accommodate uses that depend upon the large flow of traffic and convenient access, such as the retailing of durable goods, the provision of commercial services to industrial areas, and the provision of services to tourists. The highway commercial district is generally located adjacent to a major fare. <coughs> the transportation comments, US-1 is listed as a major thoroughfare as noted by the 1994 Sanford Thoroughfare Plan <coughs> Technical Report. The majority of Lee County's commercial establishments are located along US-1. The NCDOT 2007 traffic study reports 24,000 vehicle trips per day just south of the subject lot. The subject lot is not located within a water supply watershed or a flood hazard area. If this property is rezoned, all land uses in the highway commercial district will be permitted. Also, if it is rezoned, the future rede redevelopment of the site may be required to meet design standards of the Unified Development Ordinance for uses that front major highway corridors. The 2020 Land Use Plan and Greenwood Small Area Plan. The plans have classified this property within the highway commercial classification with a highway overlay. This classification is intended, again, to provide for areas that cater to commercial uses. Okay. Thank you very much. Would there be any questions? Uh, Mrs. Thompson. How many actual homes are in that area? Um, there are a home on each side of the subject property and there are a couple homes to the rear and some of the properties are rental um, yeah, just sites. A, just the side of the building. The yeah, there's a residential on each side of the subject property. Any other questions? Uh, it's appropriate at this time that we uh, have a public hearing to see and to hear from the public <coughs> pro and con about this uh, petition. So I will at this time declare this uh, meeting open, uh, public uh, meeting open for this particular purpose. And I would ask if there are any people here who would wish to speak in support of this um, plan. And uh, if so, please identify themselves and be prepared to speak, come forward. Here, yes. yes, and come forward if you wish to speak, and we'll give you three minutes. Uh, your name and address, please. Yes, sir. Good evening, Chairman and Commissioners. Uh, my name is Jerry Atkins. I am asking for the rezoning. Um, I reside at 3561 South Plank Road in the Tramway area. Um, I'm asking to rezone at 2912 Jefferson Davis Highway. Um, the property has been used for commercial for many years. Uh, I'm just asking that we just you know carry the zoning on with the property that it, that it has been used for. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else here who would speak in favor of this rezoning? If not, is there anyone who would wish to speak in opposition to this rezoning as it has been described? If not, I will declare this open hearing closed and I thank you very much, all participants. Uh, Mrs. Thompson. The next um, document that we will have a hearing on has to do with, um, well, I'll let you give us a specific, please. Thank you. Mr. Randall Goffrey have also filed an application seeking to rezone property at 2915 Tramway Road from Residential Agricultural District to Highway Commercial District. The petition lot is located on the south side of Tramway Road beginning at the southeast corner of the intersection of Tramway Road and Bruce Coggins Road. The lot is 0.927 acres in size 
and it is currently developed with a commercial building that was formerly Tramway Supply Company. The lot has over 300 feet of road frontage on Tramway Road and over 165 feet of frontage on Bruce Coggins Road. The parcel is also the same as that property referenced as Lot 2 on a survey recorded in Flat 9, Cabinet 26C, Lee County Registry of Deeds. Utilities on this lot includes an existing public water service line and a private sewage system. All adjoining properties are zoned for residential uses. The primary land uses in the, in the area are low density <coughs> single family dwellings and farmland. Several industrial uses exist approximately 1,200 feet east of the subject site and there are commercial uses in the vicinity along US-1 which are approximately 2,800 feet west of the subject site. The subject property was developed in 2001 again as a feed supply store. Prior to the adoption of the Unified Development Ordinance, farm supply sales was a permitted use in the residential agricultural district. The use has been operating under a non-conforming or grandfather clause since the adoption of the Unified Development Ordinance in 2006. The farm supply store recently ceased its use. When a non-conforming use is discontinued for a consecutive period of 180 days, only a conforming use may occupy the site. The Carrot Zoning District is residential agricultural, which is designed for very low density residential uses as well as agricultural uses. The Highway Commercial District is established for commercial uses of all types. The Highway Commercial District is generally located adjacent to a major thoroughfare. The 1994 Sanford Thoroughfare Fair Plan Technical Report lists Tramway Road and Bruce Coggins Road as major thoroughfares. The 2007 NCDOT traffic count reports 900 vehicle trips per day on Bruce Cottage Road just south of the subject uh, site. The study also reports 10,000 trips per day on Tramway Road just west of the subject site. The subject lot is not located within a water supply watershed or <laughs> flood hazard area. If this property is rezoned, all uses in the Highway Commercial District will be allowed and future redevelopment of the lot may be required to meet additional building design standards. The 2020 land use plan did not recommend a change for this area. However, the plan does identify a highway overlay node at the quadrant of US-1, Tramway Road, and Center Church Road, which extends eastward toward the southeast intersection near this site. <coughs> the property also lies within the Greenwood Small Area Plan, and that plan did identify this property within a highway corridor overlay with the highway node. And again, this is intended for areas that cater to commercial establishments. Thank you. Um, would there be any questions for Mrs. Thompson? Okay. You mentioned commercial usage in and around. I, I'm certain I know where that is. But most of that area now is currently what? Uh, farming and? Yes, single family and agricultural family. farming type use. The next commercial building is, is what? The, uh, the tractor mm -hmm. location. So if this is rezoned to highway commercial, it opens up that entire corner, that whole front section of it. I would think. Is that close? It could, could possibly start a change there. But, yeah. It certainly, once you have one established, would be pretty hard to change and, and deny another. One point of Isn't this part of the DOT? Rework of Tramway Road going to the mm -hmm. mm -hmm. going to um, Saint yeah. There's a lot of highway commercial in that area now, in the tramway area. It is some. Um, yeah. It's kind of sporadic uh, it, in, in well, the, along yeah. the tramway. Up on US One, 
and there's a group down and the Matt road. Port, the Lee County Yeah, hmm. but there's a big gap in there. This is primarily residential, a residential district homes. If you come back toward the schools, there's several businesses along there, you know, there's a wood mat furniture manufacturing place or something. Oh, I know them all. Yeah. I walk past them in there. <coughs> That's not that corner. Okay. Any other questions? If not, I will declare this meeting open as a public uh, meeting to discuss the pros and cons approval or disapproval by the general public of this. Okay. Yes. Before you move, I have one more question. Okay. Do you want to ask this. <clears throat> How are we notifying the residents in the area about what that transition or that change could mean in terms of what the uses are? Okay. We sent adjoining notices. Uh, we sent adjoining owner notices to those people that abuts this lot mm -hmm. and we had several calls and we sent out the list of permitted uses okay. for residential agriculture as well as highway commercial. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay now we'll declare this uh, uh, in an open session for the public to comment on this uh, particular piece of rezoning. Uh, let me ask that anyone here who wishes to speak in favor of this rezoning, please identify yourself and come to the lectern and, and speak to us. Um, is there anyone here in favor of? Yes, welcome. How are you tonight? Fine. My name is Randall Godfrey. I reside at uh, 1290 Steel Ridge Road. Um, my intention is to have the property rezoned from 2915 Tramway Road from residential agriculture to highway commercial. Is I've owned the property for about 10 years. Uh, along with about four other pieces of commercial property on Highway 78. <coughs> and uh, all my properties I keep up well and well maintained and look presentable at all times. Um, I have a picture here of the properties in question if anybody would like to see them. Uh, this here is the building itself. It's at the corner of Bruce Collins Road. And it's been there roughly eight and a half years. This here is the property, a sign on the property for sale that's approximately 150 yards from my corner. This uh, Roy Mashburn owns and it's got for sale will be commercial property. Uh, this here is a picture of the tractor place down there. It's approximately two tenths of a mile down the road. Um, I've got the building leased to uh, Tri-County School Sales which supply all the fundraisers to all the approximately 200 schools that sell them candies and stuff for Yes, okay. Um, my building is one of 37 commercial structures on the 3.4 mile area of Tramway Road and 48 businesses in that 3.4 mile section. The traffic count that I have between US 1 and Southern Lee High School is 10 to 14,000. Mid Carolina Turf, which is two tenths of a mile down the road, is on heavy industrial. Uh, the zoning was revamped in 06 and took away approximately 30 uses of what I already could use the building for. And what it's leased to now was in my zoning before 2006 and was taken away when we found out that I uh, went get a sign for a permit sign and found out it was no longer zoned for that, so it was a shock to me. But. Um, I'm not asking to change anything on the site other than the uses of the building. There's already a commercial structure there, um, and I appreciate your help in looking at it. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other people who would speak in favor? Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Rodney Wilder. I live at 1204 Zion Church Road in the Deep River community. We now are leasing the building from Randall Goffrey when we placed was going to place a sign permit it was to our knowledge at that point that it could not be useful we wanted to what we are planning on doing with the building is that for us is we have a place now where we have inflatables slides excuse me bounce houses and stuff for the children to play on we want to have a safe place a birthday party area birthday party rooms stuff like that for all the children to play in and just be safe and have our future children have something to do the schools are now 
using us for all their activities for fundraisers, uh, AV honor roll parties, AR gold parties, and we want to have it where they can come bring the buses in and use us for their place of assembly. So we just that's a little bit of what we want to do. Appreciate your time. Thank you. And you're speaking in favor of in this favor. Reason. Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And is there anyone else in favor? If not, is there anyone here this evening in opposition to this uh, proposed rezoning? Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm Maxine Yarbrough, and I live at 163 Bruce Coggins Road. And you may not believe it, but I wrote my address down, so I, when I got up here, I was in love with But anyway, uh, I'm sure Mr. Godfrey is a very nice person, and, I, and I'm not here to hurt him in any way. But uh, I was born and raised right on this property. And a lot of the people I grew up with, and that was 80 years ago, are still living there as neighbors. There are a lot of widow women who live by themselves, and uh, most of it is farmland. It has been from the word go. And within sight of uh, Mr. Godfrey's property, there are fields of tobacco, uh, cotton, uh, uh, pasture land, soybeans, and we, it, like I said, it's just an old established community. And uh, Mr. Godfrey had a, a store there, Tramway Supply, which he, it was fine with everybody because it fit in with the needs of the community. But um, this I'm a little afraid of because it sets a precedent of a lot of things that we would probably not want or not be able to live with that in, a, in something that's a zoned highway commercial. And I'm just, I just would like to keep the community, a rural community, like it's always been for our grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Thank you. Thank you very much. Would anyone else be here who would wish to speak in opposition? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My name is Mitch Orbera. I uh, live at 88 Bruce Coggins Road. Uh, Mr. Godfrey is a, is a nice guy. I know he's come before the board before and requested a uh, zoning several years ago. Also, with the company that has uh, leased the building from them, uh, Mr. Flood is co-owner of that business. I've already spoken to, to Mr. Flood. I told him that I wish him the best in his endeavors of his company, but uh, I look at the the rezoning now not only as a kid-friendly uh, venture that they're proposing to, to come into this building and put the, the kids' toys up. My, my son has played on his toys and uh, played baseball with Mr. Flood, so I'm well uh, acquainted with Mr. Flood, uh, but the thing that, that I'm concerned of is after Mr. Flood and his organization leaves this building, what is the future of the community then? I know I wrote down a couple of things. Uh, one of the things is this build, the back of this building basically is in my front yard. I can see it, it's right there at me, so whatever is going on at this building is, is definitely uh, my concern and, and what's going on. It says, uh, I know I've lived this, this land like my mother said I've been associated with this land for 48 years I'm 48 years old I've been living at the same residence for 17 years so this community is a quiet community where we're at I know the the uh, properties the companies that have been spoken about is either at, up at number one highway or <coughs> it's down 78 back toward uh, San Lee Middle School so for for the most part of the community that we're speaking of right now is residential. That's what we've got around us is residential. I know that uh, Southern States did well while they were at, while they were there. Very friendly, uh, community-oriented uh, establishment. But uh, with the rezoning that is, is being requested here, one of the things that I'm looking at 
is uh, the neighbors. They've been there for years. People were born there. My mother was born there. I've got people that are down the road that's been there for years. So it's not a, a community where people come and go a lot. Most of it is families that are well established. Uh, the, the zoning part that concerns me though is it, it may, with, with everything that is allowed to, to be rezoned, everything that is under the undertaking of this rezoning is multiple facets of things. Uh, it could allow this quiet community, in, in my opinion, to become a community with various issues. Uh, it could be detrimental to the neighborhood. Uh, some of the things that, that I'm looking at with that's in the confines, it's not family friendly. It, it could be noisy, it could be multiple vehicles, you could have clubs, noise, violence, and with that come shootings and fights, and even the police department in Sanford has shut several of these places down. So that this is an opportunity for us to stop it at this point. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We try to allow everybody three minutes to be fair and uh, hate to rush you, but thank you very much. Um, are there any other uh, citizens here who would wish to speak in opposition? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Neil Fields. Uh, I own the property from the tractor's place to the right of this, that first square right there. Uh, I'm in opposition. Uh, it's, I don't want, I'm, I'd like, I wouldn't like for it to be commercial in there. It's, it, was, it was purchased agricultural, it was built on agricultural, and I don't think all the agricultural uses have been extent, that have been used or tried to use and the way it's done right now. Um, uh, excuse me. Uh, there's the thing about the use that we're trying to use now for uh, birthday parties and stuff like that. They also mentioned the number, of, the amount of traffic on Highway 78. I don't think birthday parties and that much traffic go together. Uh, you park. There's no room to park buses. There, kids will be jumping out everywhere. There's already been children hit on this road before, and I just don't think that's a good use at all. The agriculture was adults mostly, and there was room for it, and I just think it's a better way to go. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Are there, is there anyone else who would wish to speak in opposition? If not, I will declare this open hearing um, closed and um, now the planning board will take these hearings under consideration that's the whole idea so that all of our citizens can speak freely to us and through us to the planning board and so at this time uh, we will complete this part of our program and uh, individuals on the planning board and others will take just a little pause for a couple of minutes for, to allow them to leave if they wish they're going to the wicker room. Uh, to the wicker room is the location. If there are any others out there that wish to join us, uh, please invite them in, and we will proceed. Uh, next uh, will be the presentation of the Employee of the Month, and uh, Mrs. Potts will make a presentation. Chairman, members of the board, good evening. good evening. It's my privilege to talk to you today about Deborah Scott, Debbie Scott, we call her. 
to the Lee County Health Department, who's been selected. July's Lee County Employee of the Month. Debbie's been employed in Lee County since 1989, and uh, she currently serves as the Child Health Coordinator. She has 20 years of service with the Lee County Health Department, where her dedication shows in her willingness to help and her concern for others. She uses her calming personality when she's working with the children that come to the health department with the services. She has a way that the children just open up to her. She takes on additional duties with an affirmative attitude and is always willing to assist in any way that she can. As a supervisor, Debbie is a team player who maintains a close relationship with her coworkers you know, by being willing to always listen to their opinions and their suggestions. Debbie truly cares about children in the county and it shows in her demeanor. As stated in her nomination, Debbie is a very outgoing, friendly person. She makes a positive impression on everyone that she comes in contact with. <coughs> Debbie and her husband Bobby have three sons, one daughter, and two granddaughters. Debbie's also an active member of Shallowell Church. She and her husband love to go fishing. I've heard about some of the fishing trips. And they spend a lot of their spare time at the beach. You can tell with this tan that she's got. Uh, based on her dedication, her services to the county, and her commitment to Lee County, the selection committee felt that Debbie should be awarded Employee of the Month. Therefore, the committee respectfully asks that you join us and awarding Debbie Scott, the County Employee of the Month, the month of July 2009. Thank you very much. Uh, we accept your recommendation. <laughs> and uh, we congratulate you on honoring us with your service. We really do appreciate it. And you do have a very calming demeanor, <laughs> and that helps. Um, you'll come forward I have some uh, things to give to you in recognition of this uh, occasion um, one uh, I, I can't be more creative I'll just present them straight out one day off with uh, pay and um, a one free movie rental to enjoy on that day off uh, one large two topping pizza from Papa John's um, two free leaders uh, dr uh, two two free two liter drinks from Papa John's Pizza, a um, plaque that speaks of your service to the county and our pleasure in making this uh, presentation to you today and for which we congratulate you. And finally, um, the Star Award, which uh, we hope you will keep and treasure for the rest of your life. And we do thank you for all you do. Thank you. Next on the uh, <clears throat> next on the agenda will be um, the the uh, we need to know if there are any additions to the agenda, anything to be added or subtracted. If not, I would ask you to look at um, the consent agenda, and I would uh, entertain a uh, recommendation that it be approved. Motion to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? There is none, so the consent agenda is approved. Um, with your indulgence, uh, fellow commissioners, and with the collaboration of, of um, Mrs. Dalrymple, I will, I, she came up with a very good idea, and I, I know you will allow this. On page 55 of the consent agenda, um, we have some people who have served our county well and um, who are going to be retiring. 
on July the 31st, and that will occur before we uh, meet again. And, and we thought it would be nice to mention their names as a show of appreciation. And so I'd like to do that. Um, Joanne Armstead, uh, Virgil Beavers, Brenda Brannon, James Cook, Gay Freeman, Anita Henderson, Carolyn Petty, Katie Petty, Linda Reeves, Judy Rosser, Barbara Taylor, Grace Taylor, Vivian Taylor, and Nancy Thomas. To all of you, we salute you and we thank you for your service to this county. Okay, um, at this time we will entertain public comments and um, we have two speakers uh, this evening. The first, Mr. Undy, if you would uh, come forward, sir. Welcome. Thank you. I'm a bit intimidated being here. I uh, don't have a very good past history when I'm in front of you guys. <laughs> But that, that's not why I'm here. I just hope that the Board of Commissioners will listen very carefully to the school board's request for their no interest loan for, for the building of the schools and whatever the needs are for the schools. I think it's a time that, uh, I know that we're in tough economic times right now, but costs I think are probably as cheap as you're gonna get. And I think if we do it now, we're gonna save a lot of money in the long run and I hope you'll give it very deep consideration and I thank you very much and I'm really not intimidated. <laughs> thank you and it's very nice to see you again. Thank you. Uh, the next uh, speaker would be uh, Mr. Oldham, Donnie Oldham. Oldham. Welcome. How are you doing? Uh, I'm just going to, I uh, guess, uh, re reiterate what I was just saying. Uh, the, I understand there's going to be conversation about the uh, the bond issue. Um, uh, I've been in construction for all my life, and I don't know of a better time that uh, the county could go out for bids on any type of construction. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that we'll probably save 15 to 20 percent. Um, and when you can get the money for free, that's kind of hard to beat, also. Um, you know, the affordability is something you guys have to decide on, but uh, as far as the need, um, anybody that's been over there, there is definitely the need, um, and I think the price will be as good as we can get in our lifetime. Um, I know we're bidding numbers that I don't ever remember <laughs> bidding before, so uh, other contractors are doing the same. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a good time as far as the market's concerned, uh, but there you go. It's uh, of you guys to decide if it's a good time for the affordability for the county. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, next, under old business, uh, page 85 of our agenda books, um, an amendment to franchise for LCID landfill. Mr. Hoyle, would you care to speak to us, sir, on this? Here before the board and explain what they would like to construct. They have complied with all of the requirements <coughs> of the county ordinance. The chair has certified it and so forth. So have the uh, planning board. And so when they completed all the requirements, I drafted the ordinance in accordance with the resolution y'all had adopted. And it is before you your consideration. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, any questions, any discussion? I, I just have a, a question. Later on, um, there's the topic that uh, Mr. Cherry's going to on the, um, the waste plan for Lee County, and one of the things that he mentioned was that you didn't think you're going to be able to meet your goals because of for the waste reduction with it because we closed down one of our facilities like this, would this help 
that situation if this franchise goes through? Uh, it not necessarily help the uh, waste reduction goals, but it does give the people of the county another option for which to dispose of that type of waste. Do we currently have uh, another place in Lee County for disposing of this kind of waste? There are a couple of uh, small areas within the county. That's the only question I had. Uh, motion's been made to approve the first reading. Uh, any further comment, question? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Measure uh, passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, which item is that? G. G. Okay. To make it a under new business. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, fellow commissioners, yeah. on page 97 of your agenda package, you will see where an appointment needs to be made to the Environmental Affairs Board. This was an oversight on my part at the last meeting when all of the other board appointments were made. Um, I was not aware that there was a vacancy on that board. So you have three applications before you on pages 98, 99, and 100 to consider. Okay, thank you very much. So we need to select one of these three individuals tonight. Um, those making application are Martin Davis, Justin Coggins, and William Vogler. Is that correct? That's correct. And uh, I would uh, open the floor for any uh, discussion of any of these candidates. Um, it's uh, your pleasure. I know Mr. Hager, uh, I've worked with him in a uh, vendor relationship and he runs a business downtown Sanford and uh, he's a straight up guy. <coughs> Motion has been made to put Mr. Vogler on the board, uh, which would uh, ask uh, for a vote. Uh, are there any questions about Mr. Vogler or any other comments about any other candidate? I don't have any about him. You have to tell from the list what, what part of the county we have people coming from. You can't, don't worry about it. I'm just curious. Uh, most of them are in the West Sanford area. All right, he's coming out of the old area. No, sir, he's in the West Sanford West area Sanford. also. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if Mr. Coggins maybe didn't check the wrong board because I noticed in his comments he references Parks and Recreation and he wanted to help continue the great programs that's established. Okay, he was. He is one of the alternates that you put on the Parks and Rec board at the last meeting. He applied for several board appointments. Okay. So, um, but he was, he is one of the, he's the first alternate on the Parks and Rec. Okay. Any other comments about any of the candidates? There's a motion on the floor to approve Mr. Vogler. Uh, all in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Opposed? There is no opposition, so Mr. Vogler will be the person that will appoint the board. Thank you very much. At the request of Mr. Reeves, uh, Commissioner Reeves, we will go now to new business and the first item will be the water extension for North Plank Road. Mr. Crompton's prepared to talk with us about this and it's on page 177 of our agenda book. Mr. Crompton. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, we received a letter from Will William Logan. Uh, on uh, Logan Farm Lane, he lives uh, off of uh, North Plank Road, requesting that the county uh, uh, get either federal stimulus money or some type of grant funds to extend extend water to uh, 15 residents along a, a .8 of a mile stretch 
off of uh, Plank Road there. So uh, we're not in the water business. Um, and before we, uh, you know, pursue any grant funds any further, we want to make sure that the board is along uh, with us on this um, uh, issue. There are grant funds out there. Uh, the Rural Center has funds available, but we're not eligible for the um, a grant app, uh, grant award until October with them, but there are other um, funds out there that we can we can try to secure through USDA, um, author also through Clean Water, just several things that are out there for the stimulus package. But we're talking about taking a lot of staff time um, to fill out applications, to go to the meetings. Um, that it's just not something we just fill out a piece of paper and send it in. You know, we have to have to have some engineering support from the city, which they're willing to do, um, and uh, to try to get us these funds. But you know, there's a lot of if you know if and ands about what we're going to do, how we're going to do it. Are we going to act as the middleman now for the county citizens and trying to get water through the city? It just kind of opens up a different uh, arena here, and uh, we're looking for some direction. As, as where we need to go with this. Well, let's open this up for <coughs> discussion. Um, it's uh, understandable what the citizens are are looking for uh, relief. Uh, they are. I out think of you're gonna. I think you're gonna see more people wanting relief. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we're we're heading back into another drought situation like we were a year ago, and we had several people come and talk to us about it, um, and they ended up going. Um, one, I know one uh, person that went through the Sanford assessment program to get water uh, and it was fifteen thousand dollars for that person so you know at, you're gonna we're gonna have more and uh, we're gonna need to establish some guidelines you know what the criteria uh, is going to be for us to get involved and to try to go after this grant money I, I think the days of the seventy five dollar tap on fee are over but you know, we can still make it a, a lot more affordable than the $15,000 route, too. So, um, and, you know, and it's going to fall on, on Russell's staff um, to do that. Mark Clark, um, engineer assistant, will, will probably have to take the lead. So that's going to take him away from other projects that we have in mind right now to go after these funds. So it's a, it's, you know, if it's a direction we need to go, then, you know, we need to do it. But, um, we need to we need some, some kind of guidance and some push along here from the board since we're not in the water business questions comments my first reaction when I saw this was I think it'd be good for us to have some kind of a needs assessment so we know how many people in the county really are without water and need it you know that's an essential service of governments to provide those services that they can't provide for themselves and I mean, it's one thing if you buy some land and you put your house back five miles in the woods from somewhere, but when you live along a major road, a paved road or whatever, um, I think it's unacceptable that we have people who don't have water and have to haul it in. So my first um, reaction is, what are the needs in the whole county? Who else is, is it the person you were referencing earlier, is that the person off of Buckhorn Road? That's 15 people. On this petition, you got this right now. You want like, you got 15 people that have asked us for help. And I think as county commissioners, I mean, we need to do whatever we can to help. If there's grants out there. I think we need to do what we can to help. That's exactly right. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Pascal. <clears throat> These people should have been helped a long time ago. I've been working on this thing for a long time, and <clears throat> they were railroaded what I call railroaded, they were just bypassed. On account of the USDA's policy, if they got, we got to go to the more uh, areas that's... Uh, got more citizens to pay this thing back. They need the water down there. I've said that all the time. They should have been the first ones to get the water instead of the last, but let's give them some water now. Whatever we can do, we need to do it. It's, a, it's our moral right. To, I can't lay down and go to sleep at night with these people not having water. I've had several of those ladies come to me with tears in their eyes wanting water. And I, I, you know, it, it, 
whenever you drank, a, you go to tap and you get you a drink of water tonight. You remember those folks down there don't have any more. Thirsty, right? Thinking about it. <laughs> 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 um, Mr. Reeves, would you? I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Go ahead. Um, would you care to uh, comment? I'm going to keep listening. Keep okay. listening. <laughs> Well, do we have do we have a handle on how many miles or citizens aren't served? Talking about countywide. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't think the answer is yes. I think the answer is no. We don't know. Um, well, I, I think mean, you. I think that was that would be you know one of those things now where you know, how do you do a needs assessment? Is you're going to need to hire an engineer. Um, engineering firm so now we're talking about you know we're gonna start spending money on something that we don't have a fund to spend money on um, so it, it gets into kind of a you know a ticklish area here and, and you know what are we gonna how's, how's the city can help us I mean they obviously have the expertise and the staff but like I was told you know before I went on vacation that uh, you know, we're willing to help, but we just need to have the revenue to pay us for our expenses. Mm -hmm. So, um, you just take one. I mean, this is one case. You just take it and try to do the best we can with it. And obviously, we don't have the money to go, you know, well, do a big countywide needs assessment. So, what bothers me though, and and believe me, I I can relate to the folks that signed this petition because I live on a road that doesn't have water, and we every time we have a drought, we get really really nervous and our farming operation, we have to purchase water from the city because the well where our farming operation is, is contaminated with iron. So, I mean, I, I, I can relate, but at the same time, we've got to be careful about the precedent we set because there's, we don't know how many citizens in the county. This is not a precedent. These folks were had signed up for water and they just scrapped, they just never did get to them. That's, that's what it was. Can't we just, I mean, obviously the city has, has done a good job in, in grant writing and trying to find the, these, these federal monies to help people and help extend their lines. I mean, why can't we, you know, apply through the county using, you know, hopefully they would help us uh, direction-wise um, and maybe put, find somebody on Russell staff that, that uh, could mm -hmm. could work you know, joint, jointly and, and try to just at least apply for the grants and you know at that point with the middleman for the city you hand it over and maybe we get the it's, it's a flood through money situation. With, with the time, Commissioner with Kelly, you know there's a need. There's a need there. Let's explore. Let's let's explore the avenue of, of settling that need. The, the best help you can offer is to tell the truth. Now, the person sitting here knows how to fix the problem right now. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the money, you don't have a solution. You, you don't have one. Mr. Billy Ray Hall told me right out of his mouth he had plenty of money. So it's not the question of money, it's just a matter of getting out there and doing it. it, it, it Mr. Billy Ray Hall is right. He's got plenty of money. Well, how he gets into Lee County is, well, is, is, is a question. If we fill out an application and get it over to him, I think well, it's that simple. You go ahead. I think that you best serve the public by first saying we don't really know. We'll have to look into it. We don't know how it's going to get done. But I do know this. It's going to take some coordinated effort from this board and the city board. It's going to take some understanding on the part of the citizens that it ain't free. And we can look for grants. And we might get a grant but it'll continue to be a cost involved and the city will be seeking that because we're not in the water business. And that's just the cold, blatant facts of the matter. We are not in the water business. It doesn't mean we're not gonna try and help with the situation. It just simply means that we don't have a quick fix for it sitting here tonight. We don't have one. And you're only fooling the public to say that we do, we don't. And we all know that. So the first step might very well be for us to try and convene with the city and find out what it's going to take along with our own staff and put some things together. I know Mr. Hall that you're speaking of. I know how the grant program works. I know who many of the benefactors are. And it's not that simple. 
but we can start working on it. So but bear this in mind, where there's 15, there'll be 30, there'll be 45, there'll be 60. And they'll keep coming because the best thing to have happened would have been to do countywide water when we first got into water business. And we did. And I don't disagree. Uh, H, uh, USDA has its own requirements. I think at one point the number was 14. You had to have at least 14 houses on it. They now got 15. If it was back then, they qualified, but it's not. So all we can do is look forward to move forward. Yeah. Well, so we got to start somewhere. Why don't why don't we uh, we got to start somewhere? Why don't we apply for the grant and? The city is more than willing to sell the water. They're in the sell water selling business. Yeah, I think we can get, you know, why can't you cut your deal with the city before you start getting out? Mm -hmm. You better cut your deal with the city. Well, I think the deal, it, I think it the deal's it, already in place with the with the with the water itself. I think they would you know, their their simple thing here is, you know, we don't mind extending the water as long as it makes sense. Um, and dollars and cents. And that's where we're going to have to come in and just provide them the dollars. Um, you know, one time there were USDA rural planning grants for water. I mean, we, we might be able to do that. I don't know if they're still out there. We haven't been in the water business. And, and uh, when I left Scotland County, I kind of forgot about countywide water because I was coming to a county that didn't provide water. So I got to get back into it. And, uh, you know, so does, so does the staff. And the city's more than willing to help us steer us in the right direction, but you know, they're out there. They're, they've got needs for water. They've got long-term plans and their staff, uh, the people who are, who are involved in those grants and involved in that, in that water and sewer plans, they're pretty tied up. So it's going to fall back on us to, to support them. And just want to let you know that you know, it's gonna, we're going to be changing directions and going that and at some point may have to come back to you and say, hey, you know, there's, there's, we've got to figure out a way to, to pay for some of this stuff. Um, let me add a couple of comments. Uh, first of all, I think Mr. Reeves is uh, absolutely right, correct. Um, uh, read my mind, word for word. Um, I, and there's, there's justice and equity in all of that. And I think that we have to get together with the city, I think, Mr. Crumpton, you need to take this uh, as an assignment right away to get into that or intensify that conversation by and, and bring back to us a recommendation at the next meeting. In writing. In writing, and uh, because you know we are not in the water business for better, for, for better or worse, and. Uh, if once you open this up, you are opening it up to other people who have equal needs, and equity has to be at the bottom of all of this. What you do for one citizen, you have to do for another. And, and Mr. Pascal, you're absolutely right. Your heart and head are in the right place. And so if you're agreeable to this, uh, uh, I'd like to ask you to talk with the city manager and take this to I, I think the sense of this board is is thorough and complete we want to help but we want to be careful and we want to all parties need to know what we are about and getting into and I think uh, you pointed out well the people who receive this water uh, as and when they receive it are going to have to uh, put some money into this also there's no free ride and we don't have a budget for this. We are out of the water business, and that, that cannot be uh, re-emphasized uh, enough. So, could, do you think that would be reasonable, Mr. Crompton? I think we could get with the city and develop a, you know, program or a plan of action to, to address it. Yeah, I like. It's still going to come down to you know we've got the uh, application ready for the rural center. We just. Um, you know, we have to wait for that next cycle, right. which is which is coming very soon. It'll be upon us before we know it. And but there are others out there that that we can go after, and we'll we'll get the the city's assistance on that. And then in in August, we'll um, we'll make a you know a, some type try to develop a program that makes that makes um, you know some sense for everybody. And and that we can be. I think I got the sense of being enablers. We can be helpful. Uh, the city is in the business of water. We are not, but we can help 
uh, with their help, put something together that serves the interest of, of these citizens. And Mrs. Shook, your point's a good one about, well, what about the others? Do we just wait until the next shoe drops, or do we concurrently, uh, not to hold things up, but begin to ask the question, where else does this problem exist? And, and how big is this problem? And, and what are the ramifications of it? Yeah, I wasn't referring to paying big bucks for a, a formal needs assessment, but just kind of in my district, you know, I've not, I, I not had one request for anybody. I mean, I hear all kind all time from people in my district, but that's not been one request I've received. But um, the reason I ask is sometimes with these government things, the more money you ask for, the better your chances of getting it than some little smaller projects. And this to me seems like it should fall under stimulus funds. This is the kind of thing we were told it was going to do, and especially for rural projects. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So that was my reason for wanting to know, uh, and I can check with you know various people in my district. Uh, I'm not aware that that's a problem, but I know. I think a lot of people know we're out of the business, so maybe they don't contact us. Yeah. So you, know, you tell them that we're we're looking at uh, developing a program and trying to find ways to help fund it. I think I think people will be calling us. You can you know you can again. This goes back to working with the city. They've got the water lines now. They know where the connections are, where they start and where they stop. That's the first step in the process. You take a look at that and then see what the general population is in that area and makes it the most feasible next step. But here's another trick to it. Not everyone wants to have water, albeit the neighbor might need it. I still remember a case out on uh, San Lee Drive at the far end near uh, <coughs> intersects with uh, the old water plant out that way and that one family was hauling water but there was no way financially they could afford to have lines run to their area they were only out there and it was on a, a paved road but there's no way they could do that we can do that so those are the kind of things you have to keep in mind when we open up the process they're going to be minimums that you're going to be affected by. And folks will have to you know, <coughs> accept that. That's just the way it is. Or Mr. Chairman, Chairman Mottie, yes, if sir. you don't have it. Mr. Reeves is probably the only one on his board who remembers this, but Leonard Barefoot stood right there in front of that podium and promised me before we sold his water line to the city there would be water on North Plank Road. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. I can hardly remember him, but I remember the promise. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be sure I wasn't hearing things. Well, no, it was one of the unleft uh, deals that the previous board should have finished and did. Uh, Mr. Pascal, does this seem like a reasonable approach if we move expeditiously? If you get some water running, get some water running that'll be the, that'll be the best proof. And I think all the people down there be happy too. Okay, well, yeah. we're going. Yeah. County extending it there. Come on. I'm just asking. These ten miles up the plank road. My house, I, I could pump it down there with a good pump out of my pond if I had to. <laughs> um, with the 100, <laughs> with the money that might uh, be available um, through a grant, I, I, I was given some indication that there was. I think you said a very good likelihood that we might be able to get this, and Man said he had the money. I mean, that's hopeful. I don't think he'd lie to me. No. They say he's going to give you any. Yes, he did. We're going to hold you to that then. Okay. I ain't to it. Okay. <laughs> we'll keep to it. Okay. I'm going to hold you to plenty it. Plenty of money. We're going to take it out of your retirement. We don't. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, moving. <laughs> Moving, uh, no, we don't need a motion. We're just asking Mr. I understand the Crumpton to, to solve the problem. <laughs> okay, uh, next, uh, Debbie Davidson uh, is going to speak with us relative to a public hearing and approval of Colt Rural Operating Assistance Grant. Um, Ms. De Davidson? Good, Good evening. evening. Board of Commissioners, um, I bring before you the. Excuse me? Excuse me, I'll start with Susan. I want to see Susan before she goes. 
You want, you want us to help hold up just a second? Okay. Okay. Um, I bring to you the Rural Operating Assistance Grant Proposal for the County of Lee Transit System for um, the year two. Uh, 2009-2010. The proposed proposed funding levels are for the elderly and disabled transportation assistance program $79,380 with no matching requirement. The employment work first funding $16,549 with no matching requirement. And the rural general public funding proposal is $94,292 with a minimum match of 10% which is paid by the fares that we charge the clients who ride under the rural general public. Um, this is an additional funding uh, stream from last year, of, and I apologize, I don't have the folder, I left it in my car, but I think it's around $12,000 more than last year, which is good. So far, so good with transportation. Okay, uh, if you'll stay nearby. Are there any questions for Mrs. Davidson relative to this uh, grant application? Debbie, I'm, sh I'm sure you've said this before, but the, the fare rate, are they a set fare or are they on sliding scale or we charge two dollars per trip for city residents and four dollars per trip for outside the city okay. then for out of town medical it is seven dollars and fifty cents each way to write for the durham chapel hill route on wednesday tuesday wednesday and thursday and it's going to call and make an appointment. Yes, yeah. we need, it's called a deviated route program. If we are in the area within two miles, we will deviate off that route to get a general public passenger. We can accommodate the majority of them. We might request that if they have an 11 a.m. appointment and we're in their area at 9, that they get on the van and they can either go to the enrichment center, read a book, or watch television there, and we'll transport them to their appointment, or they may just go into their appointment early. It's not as a cab would do it for them, but pretty much we turned down very, very few people, if any. Are you seeing an increase in oh, yes. requests? Oh, okay. yes. Okay. Yes, we have already spent. We overspent, but we had some other funding to cover it for um, 2008, and the general public ridership funding is increased here, as well as the employment, which I had a call today. We're going to open up that door for a gentleman to get to and from his employment site, and he was able to do that. Debbie, I had a question. Uh, passenger trips, let's say that Linda Shook rides this every day for five days. Is that considered five passenger trips? In other words, I'm trying to... No, that is um, each way. So that would be, if you rode five days to and from, it would be ten passenger trips. Okay, so I guess what I'm really wanting to know is how many passengers as opposed to passenger trips. I'm just trying to figure out... You know you how can, much uh, this is per person. You can have that. This is based on eight dollars and twenty-five cent per passenger trip. Some of them are only one way. The majority of them are two ways. So if you add the fifty-one nineteen for general public, and keep in mind on your second page is the supplemental funding. So what we are proposing is to provide a total of. I'm sorry, I need a calculator. 4502 and 5119, divide that by two is the number of people who are utilizing the, um, the service, and that is duplicated. There are those that ride daily, five days a week. Colts is currently running about 200 people per day for all funding sources. I was surprised at these numbers when you add up both of these together. The um, rural general public transportation was 9,600. Um, the employment transportation was 1,676, and then the uh, elderly and disabled was 9,200. Now know. this is only one funding source. Now there's a lot of other sources besides just this kind of funding source. And and I wish I had that report in front of me. I apologize. I can then get it. Um. And it, these proposed passenger trips, is that based on current plus a little bit of growth? It's actually based on no growth, to be honest. No growth. This was based totally on last year's what we call the OPSTATS report, and I took that and divided. It's, it's growth with the additional funding, so yes, there are additional trips, but it is only with the additional money that we're hoping to get. Yes. So there is growth there, I'm sorry, with the additional funds. Any other, any other questions? Move to approve. Um, we need to first hold a public hearing, I believe, and then I will open up. Yes, sir. 
We're going to open it up to a public hearing now, um, and I would ask that anyone here who is um, in support of this application who would wish to speak and go on record, having done so, please come forward at this time. Okay, is there any opposition? Anyone opposed? If not, we will call this public hearing uh, to a close, and there's a motion that this application uh, be approved. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? There is no opposition, so that is approved unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, public hearing and approval of the Solid Waste Management Plan. Mr. Joe Cherry. Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> Excuse me. North Carolina general statute requires each unit of local government, either individually or in cooperation with other units of local government, to develop a 10-year comprehensive solid waste management plan, which is to be updated every three years. The Lee County planning area, consisting of Lee County's unincorporated areas, the city of Sanford, and the town of Broadway, has prepared and respectfully submits its fourth update to its solid waste management plan, originally submitted in 1997. This fourth update, covering the period from July 1, 2009 to June 30, 2019, outlines an integrated strategy to achieve a 10% reduction in the area's generation of solid waste. Planning elements addressed in this document include waste reduction, collection, recycling and reuse, composting and mulching, incineration, transfer outside the geographic area, disposal, <coughs> education with the community through the schools, special waste, illegal disposal and littering, purchasing recyclable material and products, disaster response and collection of computer equipment and televisions. Like many other programs, solid waste must face the challenge of meeting the needs of our community with fewer resources. This is particularly true as we attempt to meet and in many cases stay one step ahead of legislation, currently including expanding our recycling infrastructure to meet the uh, continuing landfill bans and future landfill bans, and designing an educational and promotional program that will effectively increase public participation in these programs, which would of course help us to reach our goals. In short, this document outlines our plan to implement an integrated strategy for meeting its goals through a resource management infrastructure designed to reduce its reliance on land disposal and to promote sustainable behavior. Okay. Uh, questions? Uh, discussion? I, ha <laughs> I had a quick question when you were talking about um, the things that um, contributed to your failure to meet your goals. Was the frequent convenience center used by residents outside of the county? I know at one time there was some talk about doing something to identify, you know, folks. Are we mm -hmm. still talking about that or? I mean, do we have a lot of that, folks from outside of the county coming in? Uh, we we uh, gauged that at about 14% of the waste coming in was coming from wow. outside the county at, at some of our convenience centers. Uh, we do check uh, the driver's license or some other form of ID as people come in. They don't do everybody that comes in, but if they see somebody new, they'll check. So that, that's helped. Well, I know sometimes, you know, like if they would show a driver's license with a Broadway address, it might not necessarily be in Lee County. So I guess that would be part of the problem. Is there a way we could work with the tax office to incorporate something between the two as an identification that they're Lee County? Well, we, we have looked into uh, instituting a decal system as something that we're still studying. But cost? Yeah. Yeah, okay, <laughs> okay. I'll be the first to admit I'm really rusty after being off three and a half weeks and the toughest thing I had to read was uh, Old MacDonald had a farm to my <laughs> granddaughter. But when I was reading this, I, I get the sense that you created this plan but you don't think you're going to meet it. Is that right? Or no, no. Okay. That's, that's, we haven't met the previous goal from three years ago. So we have, we've set a new goal with every intention of meeting it. Whether we do or not, we'll, we'll know within the next three years. The one, one 
bright spot in the whole thing is we have had three consecutive uh, years of decrease in the solid waste generation. So it is, we're, we're closer than we have been before. So we are making some headway. Okay, I picked up on the same thing that um, Commissioner Dalrymple did that says, well, you have this plan, you're skeptical that you're going to be able to meet your goals. So that well, was the, the previous, this was from the third okay. update. Right. The previous, the skeptical would meet the previous goal, not the new goal that we set in this plan. Okay, and then um, in the second set of bulleted items at the bottom of your executive summary, uh, lack of resources, economic and manpower, limiting expansion of diversion opportunities. Um, this is, I don't know what a diversion opportunity is. Uh, taking waste out of the waste stream and diverting it from the landfill, basically. Doing what? Recycling. Just recycling, yeah, okay. taking, taking a, another commodity out of the waste stream and keeping it from going into the landfill. We're diverting it away from the landfill, from okay. land disposal. Yeah, it's rusty. Um, I have a question. Are, are there are no cost uh, implications involved here other than what you, you have a budget for doing this, and um, there are no penalties for not meeting uh, the, the uh, goals, but it's sort of self imposed. Is that correct? Uh, the number is self imposed, uh, but the state does, does look to have a reduction goal. Okay. But we yeah, I look at the program as a whole and what we can reasonably expect to do within the next 10 years, and we choose a goal from that. But the arrow is pointing in the right direction. That's yes. down. So we're making improvements, and uh, it remains to be seen if we meet the next <coughs> this target. Correct. Uh, having said that, that target is really part of the resolution that we'll be asked to approve, the whereas is... Uh, which essentially approve your plan as you submitted it for the next 10 years. And so therefore we were asked to do an open hearing, public hearing on this. And so uh, if there are no other questions, uh, we'll proceed to have uh, declare us into an open session to hear the public comment on this. And if there are any uh, people here who would um, speak in approval of this, we'd like to hear from you at this time. If not, is there anyone here who is in opposition to this resolution, this plan for the next 10 years for solid waste? If not, I'll declare this public hearing closed and now entertain a motion. So moved. It's been moved that this resolution as presented to us and is uh, be approved. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No opposition. So it is approved unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are we using prison labor there also? Is that a, no, one of the other areas where? Is it we use community service workers, but um, we, okay. the solid waste program doesn't use prison labor. Okay. Um, the next item is to consider a request from the Board of Education to apply for QSAB and QSCB, QSAB bonds for Lee County High School. Um, and Mr. Crompton's going to speak to us about this. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we received a letter from uh, Mr. Tatum, Chairman of Lee County Board of Education, asking permission to apply for qualified school construction bonds and qualified zone academy bonds. The um, county is eligible to apply for $1,760,725 in QSCAB money and uh, anywhere from $500,000 to $4 million in QSAB money. These applications um, are due July 31st. Um, we were just notified about this a couple weeks ago. I mean, this is moving along pretty quickly. Um, one of the things that, that is involved in this is even though um, we're at 1.7 million in the construction bonds, that could grow as other counties uh, don't apply for the money, um, then that up money will be reallocated on a, on a AD, ADM method back to, to the counties who are applying. So we could end up with more money um, than what you see here. That's why. Uh, under the budget impact, you know, and we've kind of given a wide range of what the annual payments would be on that. These are 
12 year notes that have to be repaid. It's basically a level payment um, over that period. And we're supposed to sell these bonds before December 31st. Um, I think that's going to be difficult to do, uh, considering right now there's uh, some questions about the market um, and whether they'll do it. it. The last QSAP we did, um, we were approved in 2006 and didn't issue it in, um, for almost um, you know, 30 months later. So um, it's difficult to, to issue these. But uh, anyway, whenever they're issued, first payment is 12 months later once we, once we receive that money. So we would anticipate the first payment would be in next year's budget, the FY 2011 budget. From the request from the school uh, board of education, they want to use these funds to begin the um, um, work at the high school. Obviously, we've already been doing work, but this is this is uh, really to get going on the renovations and the uh, site work. On page 118, um, starting in stage two, uh, it would be their proposed priorities. Uh, so, as money is approved, we would match up these proposed priorities with the money that's approved and just go down the list. That is their proposal. So um, their, their request is to apply and get going on in the game and um, I'll be happy to answer any questions. If we apply and get approved, are we committed to the payments? I mean, I think are we committed to issuing the bonds? Right. I would say no, we're not. I would say that until we actually sign the agreement that you know we're, we're, we've issued the bonds, just because you have the authority to issue the bonds doesn't mean you have to issue the bonds. But I think there's an intent there, and I think there, I think you don't want to get into this and mislead because any of the money that that is is left over, you know, is going to be used by other districts. And so if we're not going to use the money and the, you know, we're not going to commit to paying the money back, I don't think we should mislead these, these folks who are approving this money. Well, the reason I was a little confused on your blue sheet on page 116 is this, um, this amount may grow as other counties turn these funds back in. So you're talking about these potential funds. They're, That's right. Or, well, there's a, pool of, there's a pool of money and in, in the qualified school construction bonds, each county has been allocated a certain amount of money. And you know, you may have some counties that don't take that. Well, the money can only go towards the school construction, so it's going to go back into the pool and be reallocated. So let's say um, you know, a surrounding county doesn't take two mi their $2 million allocation. That $2 million goes back and then reallocated to the folks who are going to do it, and so that money would conceivably grow. I, I don't I don't see how s some of these counties would would do this. Um, the county I came from, uh, I, I doubt very seriously they would do it. They're eligible for about 1.6 million, and I would see them probably turning these funds back in. So there will be several counties in that boat. So that's how it gets reallocated. It gets reallocated on the ADM. Maybe maybe part of it is when you say turn it back in, you speak as if you have it to give back. But it's just what sort of a set aside. For it's right a, now? Yeah, it's a set aside. You apply for it. It's not yours. It's just you are eligible to apply for. It. Uh, and if you choose not to, or you say you're not going to, then it moves to the pool. That's on the the school construction bonds. Then you have the other pool, with which is the QSAB, and uh, you know, obviously their projects exceed um, the four million, so I'm sure they're going to want to apply for all. They're going to go for the max um, of the four million, and whether they can get anywhere between five hundred thousand and four hundred thousand is going to depend on how many other counties make the application. So it's going to be it's going to fall in that range, somewhere between five hundred thousand and, and four million. Um, in the in the event there's some money left on the table, it's Q's, um, QSABs, uh, the zero interest incentive uh, type uh, grants, um, how much could we potentially stand to gain? I mean, how much could we handle if we went back to the table and found that there was some on the table 
uh, can you give me a sense of how that works? Would we then say we would like $5 million of zero if it's there? And they would say, you know, fine. Well, you used the word handle, and there's, you know, handle means to me our ability to repay. Yeah. So, um, over 12 you're, you're years. Ask, yes, you're yeah. asking me the uh, probably the pa property tax rate question here, or how are we going to pay this back? Where are the funds going to come from to pay this back? Right. And, um, you know, right now I would have to tell you that based on the fact that our sales tax is not growing and our you know our property uh, tax base has, has been pretty level it, it we would either have to raise taxes or we would have to lower expenditures again to absorb this payment is this somewhere that uh, well we if we do not wish to raise the property tax would this be uh, an opportunity to raise uh, or vote for a the quarter cent sales tax is that something that could be used and applied to pay this back well absolutely if, if the board was willing to put it back on the referendum on a referendum and and, and vote on that how, how do you have any sense of how much that would generate mm -hmm. it's about 1.23 million um now and remember when we discussed it before it was about 1.5 so it has you know the the amount has has come down since it's based on a point of sale um, allocation and, it, and as we go through the the sales tax report tonight you will see that on the point of sale we are we are further down than we are on the on the per capita distribution of the sales tax so uh, questions comments so we're in the budget for next year we're paying on the <coughs> QZABs that were issued in 2006 so that's covered right we've got that in the budget yes, ma'am and what would be the payment per year on this did you give that to us yes yeah, it's, it's either you know it's gonna it's I gave you a range um, the low end the low end uh, if it was if you add the 500,000 and the 1.7 million, that's 2.2 million, and the payment's going to be around $190,000. And then as you go higher, you know, we estimated that it could be could be as high as 500,000. That's a big discrepancy. <laughs> well, it's a big pool, <laughs> and they're pro and it's a big project. So you know, if you if you look at the next page, uh, the next couple pages, and you start going through. Um, you know their project list. Stage two total project cost is eight point five million. So, you know, I is this contingent upon they also have to get the ten percent interest free capital buy in from business? I don't remember that on one. the QSAB. And how would that be accomplished? Well, we accomplished that through the Boys and Girls Club uh, on the two thousand six QSAB. It and it was a an volunteer organization. I thought it had to be a real business, not a nonprofit. Did I misunderstand this? No, it cannot be a government agency. It cannot be a government be a agency. Mm -hmm. And so they pledge, basically, it's in kind. Mm -hmm. And they left a lot of in kind on the table <laughs> to what their 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 value was in the 2006. I don't know that we could use them again, but there's some money there to be used. If, if we needed to. I guess the reason that I thought it had to be not a nonprofit or a volunteer organization, um, page 124, and they're listing the um, types of contributions, equipment, including state of the art technology and vocational equipment, technical assistance in curriculum development or teacher training. Um, services of employees as volunteer. I don't know if Boys and Girls Clubs are employees. They have employees mm -hmm. that they employ that run the mentoring programs for the kids after school. Okay. So we would qualify under C. And they do field trips and educational And D. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other um, questions or comments? Um, I have. I mean, I'd, I'd like to say something at the appropriate time, I, um, but I'd like to take any other questions or comments. 
I guess my only concern is if we go through with this and we get it approved, I don't want to be bound by it. We haven't gotten the final acts from the General Assembly yet, and I don't think the school board has either. So I just, you know, I don't want to keep them from applying for this because I think, you know, you're not going to get money at a better rate, but I don't want to be bound by it if a week after if August 1st we get the final act from the state government, which we have to cut even more than we have already. Right. Yes. I, I, um, I mean, I, I'm definitely uh, agree with Ms. Shook and, and with our speakers that were during the public comments. Um, it's never been a better time as far as zero interest and, and some of the things on the table with the stimulus package. Um, so, I mean, I say we try. Uh, I, I don't think anybody, as one of the gentlemen said, if you ride by Lee County High School, you cannot deny the need. Um, so that being said, I still have a lot of questions. Um, I, I, as I told one member of the school board, I think I could recite the height plan in my sleep because I saw it so much at one time but I realize that a lot of that plan has already taken place at Lee County High School with some demolition and that type of thing. And also with the construction costs changing. Um, and this is sort of an aside to this, but if, if we could call a special meeting and have some folks from the Board of Education uh, and administrators come and present kind of an update as far as dollars go. Um, for this phase two and then phase three and phase four um, so we can look out and see what we need to do and what we can do um, and, and get a plan together. Well, what exactly are you looking for? Because one, you only got a few days before you have to have the application in it. This is correct. Is that That's correct. These well, for this, yes, months. but I'm just saying, you know, for if, if we're starting the ball rolling out there just to get an update you know, think the dollar amount's not going to be the same. And this is kind of our priority one on our CIP. Um, but but I don't want to confuse the issues. Oh, sure. No, yeah, I don't want to. I want to stick to this for, for the time being. Right. If that's what you're talking about, then, then I'm fine. But, but not something else. What, what I want to hear the managers uh, think <laughs> of, I understand, but. I'm no different than you. I don't want to deny them the right to apply, but I don't want to ruin your credibility by applying without first knowing you can pay for it. Because if we can't pay for it and we're not willing to pay for it, then you get to the trough and they say, well, here's your deal, and we say we can't take it because we've now figured out that we just can't afford it. I don't know what that does to you the next time around, the next time you go to back. And that's what I want to do is comment on some reassurance from somebody who's been involved. I haven't been involved. Um, let me, the, the assurance is that, you know, we can absorb it within the exa existing tax rate. You know, we're too early in, the, in, the, in this fiscal year to really say what's going to happen and then where we're going to be in next year's budget. I mean, it's been very, if 12 months ago, if you would have told me I'm sitting in this chair, and that we would have cut six million dollars out of our budget, I'd have told you were crazy. Right. You know, for you know, comparing the last two budgets, so you know, a lot of that has to do with you know where the economy is headed. Um, you know, and and I wish I could predict and give you some assurance, but I cannot. Right. What was it? Twelve months ago, when we put the absent cell tax on. Which it I was thought that it should, uh, whenever it was, what, which I thought was the best time for it to ever pass, it was going to pass, and it was blown out of the water, and we wait until conditions are at their highest peak, and now we're talking about revisiting that idea. Well, that sort of gives me an opportunity to say a couple of words. Um, okay. Um, and I do know this, that for us to reconsider or to consider um, the sales tax to help pay for this uh, high school reconstruction, 
we have to decide something by the 1st of August, I'm told, in order to, if we wanted to have that voted on by the citizens in November. Uh, it seems to me like that um, we have never, we've never had a, a worse <laughs> recession in my memory, but we've never, by that same token, had a better opportunity to take advantage of uh, this situation where we can uh, save as much as 20 percent or more on the construction, we are told, even by a contractor here, a builder, that, um, for instance, we could save on a $25 million package, I just pull it out of the air, five or six million dollars coal money that could be saved if we could find our way to go to get into this now. Um, and I think that the high school, it's inevitable that we're going to have to fix it, that we're going to have to do something about it. It's, it's a sore in so many different ways, uh, commercially, uh, economically, educationally, uh, uh, by all means, that we really, uh, I, I think it's worth debate, worth serious debate, um, toe to toe, eyeball to eyeball, if we have to, to try to come to some uh, point that we say we have done everything we can do as county commissioners to encourage and support the educational community to do what they have to do and to give them uh, to the best of our ability the facilities they need to educate our number one assets and they are our children and and I think a lot of people are watching and waiting and it, it's my observation that, and it's my hunch, and I may be proven wrong, but um, I think that there, there is a pent-up demand for this, and I think if this board were to decide that it really wanted to put its shoulder to the task and, and see this thing through and, and, and build as much as we can build short of having to raise property taxes, uh, I believe that we would stand a reasonable chance of passing it but we'd have to, with the school uh, people, that whole community, we would have to really uh, campaign and make our points and, and make our economic points that are the most important things, or certainly for, from us as business people here and the responsibility for the finance to talk about the tremendous savings that we can realize if we can get out there in the marketplace, in the marketplace right now. and. Uh, and then to take advantage of these zero percent uh, bonds, the, the combination of those could be, could get us halfway to three quarters of the way through the plan for reconstructing Lee High School. And I think that requires uh, leadership and I think it requires courage to do that. And I'm prepared myself to lead that effort but not foolishly, not blindly, uh, and I'm not trying to grandstand. This will probably be my, my shot at the ring, and, and, and I'll take it. But it'll have to be done with the, um, obviously, the intelligence and the, and the support of this board, certainly the majority, to do this. And so I suppose, Mr. Reeves, um, you, you raise a good question, and this, for anybody else, I was hoping that tonight we could allow them to proceed with this proposition before us to let them make this application, knowing that there's a lot of unknowns out there. Uh, good gracious, we don't know what the state's going to do, but I think we've got to run the risk of giving them the opportunity to make application and then we will monitor this as we go along. The other thing is I was thinking about if we could have a meeting called uh, say next week uh, and really look at in earnest the possibility of going with a um, quarter cent sales tax but only on the basis of having the school people talk to us again about the height plan about what we can and cannot do how the math works out and to see if we could put that together in good faith and go forward with it and that's sir. yes sir I've listened to the discussion and what I see here is a small opportunity for this board and for us to move ahead with some improvements over to high school and I'd like to make a motion we'll allow the Lee County Board of Education to apply for these bonds and authorize you to uh, sign the application. <coughs> I think it's been 
and help discussion. I mean, I, I, all right. We got an, a small opportunity here, and I think we ought to take it. Take okay. I'd like to say something first. Yes, sir. Um, I think that uh, this is a, a crossroads for this board and Lee County if if we're ever going to get something done out there. And with any good business decision, there's risk and there's reward. And usually they're not. They're they're always intermingled. And zero percent does not come around very often. That's right. If ever. And twenty percent savings on construction. It's been down now for I don't know how long, and uh, it's going to stay down until we get some work out there. You know, these contractors get loaded, and the price goes back up. Well, you know. I think that you know, if we're going to be leaders of Lee County and you know be the elected officials that are leading Lee County, we need to lead and make it very you know it's a very difficult decision to sit here and and to put yourself out there when the economy is the way it is in hopes a year down the road it's going to be a different scenario. But you know I think my vote is to, to proceed with this. Well, there's well, I think that's good, and, and, and I can respect that. But let me ask you this, because I get a little confused. It was, what, the June 15th meeting when four of you said you couldn't vote to raise taxes at all? We're not voting to raise taxes tonight. Well, what, what you're doing is a tax. I don't care what way you put it, but that's just my point. We're still going to have one, and we certainly have that right. But we, we were dealing with an issue that was just as serious to those individuals as this is to you. Uh, and, and we fully backed off of that. But let me ask you this, what, in what amount are they going to apply? I apply for every dime you can get. And what will that cost us, whatever that amount is? Does anyone know well, that? If they got the... Um, 5.7. I'll just confirm my numbers. That's a payment of $480,000 a year. It's a penny on our taxes. It's a penny. And, uh, you know, you float. I, I just think you're not going to get a tax increase passed in an economic situation mm -hmm. like this. I, I just don't see that happening. But let me ask you this, John. If um, Pro Property tax. Any kind of taxes. Uh, you you take a look at what the state of North Carolina is trying to do, and they're Beverly Purdue's wanting to raise Linda, sales tax. Well, can, can they can do that, but I'm saying the electorate has to to do it, and that's what I'm saying. I don't think will happen, but I could be wrong. In a referendum, you would think that. And I wouldn't spend the taxpayer money on a referendum this fall if that's the only thing that's on it countywide. I I learned my lesson. <laughs> We did something quick before, I think it was that wine thing or whatever, and I didn't realize at the time that we were, you know, it was going to cost $10,000 or whatever just to put that on there. So I think we have to be concerned about how much it's going to cost the taxpayers just to put it on the referendum. But John, if we apply for, if they apply for this and they get approved and we find out that we're in a lot worse situation than we are, we still don't have to issue the bonds or put do we have any cost involved with issuance? Is that right? I have yes, to turn sir. to the, yeah, there is <laughs> issuance cost. But you um, don't incur those until you make the decision to issue. <coughs> and we cannot issue this debt. There will be public hearings. You would have to approve the application to be submitted to the LGC, et cetera. Um, and we, yeah, we still have some hoops to jump through after, right. after we apply tonight. And you said you thought it would be hard to have these bonds issued to begin with, right? So you know, there's, there, was a, there was quite a bit of chatter on the manager's listserv about it. Um, and, and there's a lot of concern that if all of a sudden we all go out at one time to, to issue these bonds, you know, who is going to do it? I mean, it took us almost two years, it took us over two years to issue the last one. And uh, we were one of maybe 20 counties or so that, that could issue them. So, you know, you're out there now and, you know, whether they, you know, how much of a market there's going to be. But then again, you know, if you don't apply, you're not going to know. So well, I'm comfortable I, I, with voting to let them go through the application process. As long as I know that if we get word that things are bad, that we can just say, let's not try to issue these. 
after July 31st or whenever they get approved. So. Well, we have till December 31st. Okay. And by that time, you'll know, you, you know we'll have a better picture, and we're going to give you a pretty decent picture of, of how our year ended in just a little bit. So there is there is some optimism there in, in our fund balance. For you know we we did a lot of good things last year after we saw things going going bad. Yeah, you know, and, and, and Madam Clerk, I want to record with you. I'm not in opposition uh, to allowing the application to go forward. And as long as there's going to be a vote of the public for whether it's an abstent or a property tax, that's fine. But I am not on record for, for any reason voting for any kind of tax increase, any kind. Um, very good. And there is a motion on the floor by Mr. Oldham. And so let's uh, go ahead and, and uh, vote on that now. All in favor of the motion to allow the Lee County Board of Education to apply for these funds and authorize the chairman of the Lee County Board of Commissioners to sign application say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. Before we leave this, I wanted to ask um, if there would be interest by the board to look at this, uh, say, next week in a special call meeting uh, and have more time to look at the ramifications of this and also the possibility of looking at how much we could accomplish in that construction plan if we had the support of a half cent uh, sales tax. Not a property tax, not a property tax, but a half cent sales tax, or we could do one or the other. I mean, we could, I just, I, it seems like there's enough here that needs to be discussed that we do well to sit down with some of our uh, school board colleagues and Mr. and Dr. Moss and look at where we are and bring some things up to date and see for all of us to come out of it and feel better that we had all the facts that we could bring to the table. Mr. Chairman, I will not be here. You will not be here. Well, why do you need to meet before we get there? Just give us the information and let us look at that so we can come to our well, I suppose I, I was keeping in mind the fact that if for some reason we decided that we wanted to go with a quarter cent sales tax in the fall, that we would have to make application to do that by August the 1st. I, that's what I've been told. You have to have 90 days to the Department of Justice for anything we were to add. And, and I would just, just add this, that in that, I'm not looking for any more tax increase than the next fellow, but I, I am overwhelmed by the opportunity to save tremendously and also to bring construction to this community through subcontracts and things. It could be, could be a real boon for us if we could pull it off. Uh, and, and, but we've got to explore it before we deny it, I think. We're having an election anyway. Sir? The city's having an election anyway. Uh -huh. We can't watch the money. So, I mean, if the public votes it down again, they vote it down again. Right? The county residents aren't going to vote in the city election. Now you'd have to open up the rest of the precincts, precincts and so, you know, there's there was some there was some concern about whether we would pay for the entire election or not at that point, whether we would still get the city's <laughs> revenue. Mm -hmm. And um, there is... There are some of the other counties, Harnett and Moore, who are having referendums in the fall where they are charging the municipalities anyway. So that, uh, that should be interesting to see how that works out. But uh, I'm trying to follow that right now to find out how they're doing that. <laughs> but but there we do there, a lot of business. There there is so one side of this argument that says that this that that there's never been a better time to really address this and take advantage of, of the wave, and and there's risk involved, and that's the, the reason I wondered if the board would be interested in uh, with the school board uh, officials to explore the possibilities before the we pass that deadline. I suppose that's what I'd like to ask. Would you be? I, I think until we see what the state is going to do, you know, you're cutting off your nose to spite your face sometimes too when you do this because you add that 
that sales tax in there and pretty soon you make it so the climate for businesses to relocate here and others, you know, for the state of North Carolina, we're getting really pushed out of there now. If they increase these income tax rates and the temporary sales tax increase at the state level, you know, I think we need to look at all of that because you get that money and you raise that, but then you can't have businesses go out of business and others won't relocate here because of our tax structure. You gotta look at all of the, those things. Melissa, have you stopped and bought anything that cost a buck lately? I did. Where was it? At Walmart, at that one buck line. What did I, they charge you? <laughs> what they charge me? Yeah. They didn't charge you a buck, they charge you a dollar seven. They didn't charge you a dollar six and three quarters, they charge you a dollar seven. So you're already paying it part of the time anyway. That's right. Yeah. So it's not, I don't see it as a big deal myself. Maybe. I think you let the public decide. Yeah, let the public they, decide. They want it. Mr. Kelly, could you tell us a little more what you what you mean by that? Are you are you suggesting that we put it before the public again? I mean motion put it before the public. Well then but that we could talk about it in a in a special meeting? Sure. Hmm? sure. Uh, you got to make the most away. No, no, I'm not. I, I'm not looking for you another thing. Except that. I, I just want to make sure that. Put hey, in mouth. I'm not going to be here next week. Huh? I'm not going to be here next week. My point is, that I don't see if it's going to cost ten thousand dollars extra to uh, have the public decide. I think it's worth. The ten thousand dollars to okay. So you would not close the door on putting this proposition back to the public and doing the work that's necessary to try to. Yeah, uh, let the record show that. I think that's important that it's said. Um, okay, I don't hear any joy about having a meeting next week, and Mr. Keller's not going to be here. Uh, going, going. I'll make a motion. That that's what he's doing. He's put making it on the ballot. In okay. November. All right. I uh, hear that in motion. <laughs> Uh, is there further discussion about that? I'd, I'd like to know what, what the cost is going to be and how it's going to work. I don't want to in fact, uh, unfairly uh, charge the city uh, or pay for the city's election because they're going to have one anyway. So let's get some of this money straight now. Uh, we're not that rich. Well, well, then, then modify your motion so that it supports that. In what manner? Because I would pay the with the city is what you're talking about. Paying about. for the portion that is above and beyond for the county. Yes. Okay. I'm not finding much for that. Uh, Mr. Crompton? I understand the motion. You the understand motion. the motion. Yeah, the motion is to hold the uh, quarter cent sales tax referendum in November uh, with the county paying the amount above what the municipal elections for the town of Broadway and the city of Sanford cost. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. One opposition, uh, six in favor. Now here's the question. If the city says no, you're going to have to pay for it. <laughs> you want <fun> again? <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, yeah. yeah, we did. Yes. Yeah. Unanimous. And this one was six to one. And I thank you very much for your indulgence here. And this was worth the conversation. The next item on the agenda is the uh, Consider Interlocal Agreement for Dispatch Services, an interlocal contract for 9-11 with the City of Sanford. Mr. Crump. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. We've been uh, passing this back and forth with the city for about 16 months. And uh, the, about a month ago, the city came up with these two contracts. Um, Uh, the motion's been made and uh, the question's been called. Is there any comment, any questions? Yes, there is. What page is this on? 150. 150. I have two, two concerns. Um, with the um, calls, 
what percentage of calls. Uh, this is on either is? either. Uh, I'm looking at 155, but I think they're the same for the dispatch services as well as the gentleman called the interlocal contract. Um, I guess what I don't know is it says percentage of calls, but. As I found out recently, if you call in over the weekend with a water problem, you go to the police department. And if somebody calls in there and says, someone stole my bike from my porch, you know, if they're dialing into 911, that's not really a 911 call. So I guess my concern is how can we tell that the call volume that's referenced here is 911 specific? Because well, we're paying on, we're paying the county portion based on the percentage of actually those calls aren't coming from the county those, those are coming from the city so if they did count those they would help the county we would pay a lower percentage so there's a way for us to know the calls that just come from the county yes they report that to us okay and they and they can have a report for us to, to show us that I have uh, two other concerns. Uh, one of them, there still is no mechanism here for addressing grievances, you know, uh, with the way that fire calls are dispatched. And a third one, I had somebody call me probably a couple months ago. Somebody, whoever in the county or the city changes street names, changed one. And this, this family had called EMS, and the EMS people didn't know where this house was because they didn't know about the new street name that you know had been there forever and so it was like 45 minutes or so before EMS got there and I don't know whether GPS would have um, you know facilitated that call there but I guess my concern is this is the same old same old and so we're not looking at you know improving services for citizens in the county here and you know, we're not providing any way that if somebody has a, a complaint or a grievance that they can get it addressed. Am I correct? There's, there's not a complaint or grievance procedure in either contract. So, you know, the, the, if there was a real, you know, there, if there's a complaint, the, the procedures that are in, in place or were supposed to be in place is that it would go through the fire marshal's office. Um, it's not anything that's in writing. That was just what was supposed to be happening. And some of the complaints that are in the future, I mean, in the past, um, you know, Shane has taken written reports and has furnished that to, to uh, um, Pat Garner. So, and that is the procedure that was in place. The reason that's a concern to me is because it does affect the way the fire mar the uh, volunteer fire districts, their, their marshals have to report and it, it can affect their ratings you know they've had these complaints before so um why, why don't we cut to the chase uh let them submit a written complaint to the board of commissioners and we'll take it up with whoever it is mr chairman mr reeves you got a motion on the floor let's uh this is the best agreement we're going to get. We've been messing with this thing how long? Let, let's let's vote on okay. it. I don't mind waiting until she at least reaches a point where she makes a decision. And I, I, I can't support it if I know we don't have a way to address those grievances. I'll offer you a way. Do you, do you accept that way or what? A, a written, you know, I'm, I'm very sensitive about complaints. People do frivolous things for no reason at all. Make them put it in writing, sign it, submit it to this board, we'll address it ourselves. Now, you can't get much better than that. Well, I and just if it's a city resident, they go to the, to the city council. Next to the meeting. And we copy each other. So we, we, we will be the grievance committee. Right. Right. Are you comfortable with that, Amy? Because you know what their concerns are, too. I, I, I do, and I, I, I think... Come on now, let's get the team on. We just no, on no, 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 no. I mean, I think that's a great idea. I mean, right. let us be the grievance committee. Right. We're, we're ultimately responsible. Let's right here. Sense here. We'll I mean, we're, we're, we're the providers of, you know, right. the 911 service, and if they have a problem in the county, they need to come to us. But we're not tied into this long term. It's... We can get out of that. Is that, is that, we will, that we fair enough, Mr. Hall? <laughs> I mean, can we act as the grievance committee for? Sure. 
Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, this this um, agreement is about the best that we can get. It's not perfect for either side. I, I've just been a, around it enough to know that it's been back and forth, and as you know, with the city council. And um, I, I think that this is going to serve our purposes, and I like this idea that Mr. Reeves has come up with about a grievance. How more direct could it be than let us know if you've got a problem, and we'll go from there. So, so we got a motion on the floor, and the question's been called. I'd like to ask the vote now, and thank you very much uh, for your comments and questions. Now they come from my volunteer fire. I know they do. I know they do. All in favor of the motion, uh, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed. No. One no. Six approves. <laughs> Thank you very much. We've seen these complaints come in, they don't get addressed, so well, I knew the city would be you know, willing to, if to they listen fail to them. this time it's gonna be your fault, but you voted again. Okay. I'll make sure you support them know that. Okay, the next item on the agenda is tax collectors annual settlement to collect 09 taxes, Mr. Brinson. Okay. Okay. Great. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Prepared a presentation for my annual tax settlement. Try to be as efficient as possible. I know it's a long agenda. Um, the annual settlement is a pretty important part in the collection of taxes. <laughs> go through it. We'll go. Um, I'll tell you what the process is, what's involved in settlement, and we'll review performance in fiscal year ending 2009. Process is governing board must charge the tax collector with fiscal year 2009 taxes and prior years. It officially constitutes the first lien on real property and any personal property that could be attached to it. Items to be included in settlement, you have a preliminary, preliminary report, you have a list of insolvents, settlement for current year taxes, and then disposition of tax receipts after the settlement. And all of this is included in the resolutions you should have in your packet. Review of performance in fiscal year 2008. I broke this down into three different categories. You have a real and personal category here, public service and utility companies there, and registered motor vehicles here. On the far right side, this is the amount that was uncollected in that category. That's the collections percentage, 98.56. In public service, we have $2.09 out there somewhere and which round up equals 100%. We're going to have to look for that. <laughs> Registered motor vehicles, which you can see is, a, is down a little bit. Um, uncollected is about 390000 and the percentage for that category is 87.15%. The main thing affecting the motor vehicles is, I believe, you know, somewhat of a complicated process, which is the the um, state division of motor vehicles and the state tax associations are in the process of implementing House Bill 1779. If you guys aren't familiar with that, um, it's where you would pay your tax at the time of tag renewal. So whenever that bill passes, collection rates should be at or near 100 percent, and that would really help out the collections presented in that category. Overall, uncollected in fiscal year 2009 is $838,285.07. Overall collections percentage or weighted collections percentage of 97.64%. The next slide shows really where our foreclosure process shines this year. If you look all the way back in this fiscal year that just ended 2009, we can go all the way back to 1998 taxes. We have the statute of limitation gives us 10 years from the due date of a tax to use enforced collections. After that 10 years passes, we can still collect, but we, we can't use enforced collections. So you can see the, for 1998 taxes and down, this is the beginning balance at the beginning of the fiscal year last year. This is what we collected, original levy, and to date, this is our collections percentage. The largest factor I want to show you here uh, is again with motor vehicles. If you see two years out, we're collecting 99.15% of taxes overall. And I attribute that mostly to collecting those motor vehicle taxes that are delinquent from the prior year. People are getting blocks on their tags. Whenever they go to renew the tags the next fiscal year, they go ahead and they have to pay that tax. 
So I attribute that increase mostly to the, the motor vehicle. Next slide just shows that we moved up from ninth in our population group of 25 counties to four. Kind of had an internal goal this year to move into the top five, and we did that. Just a few things I want to show on this slide here. First of all, those, that, well first, this, these are all the counties in our population group right here on the left. Those in yellow are the ones that had a decrease in overall collections percentage in the last two years, comparing to last year or the year before last. The ones in green had an increase. You can see one of the things I want to show you is that we actually have the largest increase in our population group at 0.71% overall. Is that due to the method of the way we're collecting now? It, they're actually a number of things, and I'll, <coughs> just a second, I'll get to that, I think. If not, I'll come back to it. We bought a rock line. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah. Going door to door now. Yeah, with the rock line. <laughs> Pretty convincing. Um, one more thing I want to show you here. If you look, and let's say the top six counties right here down the chat, something should stand out at you pretty sharply, and that is our motor vehicle collection. We are considerably below the top six or seven counties there in our population group. I've talked with every one of those counties, and I've asked them, what do you do to collect motor vehicle taxes? Nobody does anything more than we do, except for Moore County, and they actually seize motor vehicles and levy on that. We actually probably two or three of those counties, we actually do more than what they do. So I'm not really sure why it affected us like that. Um, also, the two top in our population group, Moore and Craven, those are big retirement communities. They aren't affected as much by the economic downturn as we would have been. The last thing I want to show you is, let's see, Chatham County went down probably about a third of a percent there. What I want to show you is that the reason we increased so much is not necessarily due all to our foreclosure program. It had some to do with their internal changes as well, reorganizations, new programs, procedures. Because uh, Chatham County actually started the same foreclosure program that we did, and they, were, they started two months before we did. Also, we've got Lenore County that uses the same foreclosure firm, and Craven, and all those have decreases. So that leads me to believe that the internal changes that we made, you know, that, that really affected our collections percentage. This is the same information, just on a bar graph. A summary of our population group stats. Um, the group average, 96.05, the median, 96.03, and we're 97.64. Last year, our population group average was 96.52. So you can see the, the group average really declined this year as overall population group. The enforced collections. To date, since October, we started our foreclosure program in October, we've processed 989 parcels through the foreclosure process. Total tax collected is a little, little over $900,000. Now all that is not county tax. You have some properties that are in the city. You've got uh, fire district taxes and solid waste fees as well. But a big portion of that is county tax that we've collected through that process. The uh, bank attachments and garnishments, we issued about 1,500 of those. Historical analysis of the collections percentage. I've got data back to 2004 on this chart. And you can see we had a couple years of big increase, 2004, 2005, had a pretty good increase there. And also this year we had a pretty big increase. Same that on a line chart. Why are we so successful in this fiscal year? Actually, a, a number of reasons. I'm um, supported this board, county administration, department heads, and tax office staff. Went through a lot of change this fiscal year, and everybody was behind us, and that helped tremendously. New programs, procedures, and overall reorganization. A few things I want to talk about there. We started doing, towards the end part of this last fiscal year, we started making collection calls and visits. Um, I think it's good to have that personal contact with the taxpayers. I think of the people we called, I'd say probably 75 to 80 percent made some kind of payment. So I wish we could call everybody, but that's just not very realistic. Another thing is we use a team-based approach now. 
with the collections division, um, tasks can become mundane. We've just got everybody working on a number of tasks. It keeps their job, kind of gives a variety to the job, keeps them interested. The RMB on forced collections, we kind of changed that process. We started using bank attachments and garnishments almost as soon as the delinquency date comes about. Towards the end part of last year, we also uh, started sending letters out to the larger delinquent motor vehicle bills, and we got a, a good deal of money from that. We started attaching escheat funds from the state, people that have unclaimed money there, and also increased the number of garnishments and bank attachments. So those things combined are really the most of the internal changes that we had this fiscal year. We have a good management team in the tax office. The management team is actually starting to cross-train with each other now. We've cross-trained the staff a lot, and now the three division managers are, are cross-training themselves, which will be very efficient in the future. The foreclosure program obviously had a, a good effect with us. We hadn't processed a foreclosure for almost three years before we started this foreclosure process. So it was, it was a, quite a bit of a change for us and the citizens of Lee County. But we are actually, as of our August distribution, we will be caught up with the parcels we can submit to foreclosure. So we won't have to do another distribution until May of 2010. One last thing with the collections division. I did this, I calculated these numbers a while back. But there are five people in the collections division, and um, outside of the manager, Danette Fitzpatrick, I think there, the average years of work experience is 1.64. So knowing that, Danette does a really good job of mentoring her staff, and she's a really good leader in that. It takes good leadership to, to attain that high of a collections percentage and implement all those new programs, and you know, just be a good mentor like that. The accomplishments. We rose to the top five in our population group, which again was one of our internal goals. Increased collections percentage to the highest mark in our recorded history. Um, I checked with the state treasurer on this. We had a couple years around 97% almost right there at it, but we, we exceeded that this year. We started focusing on improving communication with taxpayers even more so than the year before last. I started the, the distribution email list, which I'll send out periodic updates to taxpayers important dates, revaluation information, um, and we can also send delinquent notices to them as well. I think the one, of, one of the biggest challenges with motor vehicles is that we don't have an accurate address to send the bills to. So if we can have that email address, most people don't change the email address when they move, and we can always send that delinquent notice there. So that should help us out in the future. We're updating the website. I know Kyle and Auntie are, are doing a new platform there. And I'm excited about the possibilities that will bring. I think there are a number of technological improvements we can do with that. And we're also continuing to implement automation to track our enforced collections measures. Our goals for fiscal year 2010 is to augment our current email distribution list. Um, as you know, I sent out a, a notice with the tax bills, which explained our foreclosure process, and also encouraged citizens to sign up for my email distribution. Uh, that will actually it will save a lot of fees, interest for the taxpayers, and it will help us by getting our collections rate up. Uh, we're going to use, continue to use information technology to assist the taxpayers and continue to try to in increase the collections percentage. The economy has really affected people this year and will next year. There may be some people to pay this year that can't pay next year. We're taking that in consideration, but we really hope to increase it even more so next year and the foreclosure program, I think that'll have more of an effect on the collections percentage next year because all we'll be processing is 2009 taxes. We're finished with 2008 taxes, 2007 taxes. So as of, um, after bills become delinquent next year, all we'll be doing is 2009 taxes. And also, we're gonna continue educating on Lee County citizens. We do a number of presentations. Uh, we've been at Ross Barn. McSwain Center, just everywhere. If anybody wants us to go out and do a presentation, we're certainly open to that. Let's try to educate the citizens. Do you have a complaint procedure listed on your website and box for that? We have appeal forms, but no, we can probably do a complaint procedure. Right. Maybe a flow chart, you know, if this is your complaint, go through different branches. And we could probably do something like that. Certainly. Questions, comments? 
When we talk, when you and I talked about um, a problem that a citizen in my district was having, we talked about the signs on the property. Is that something that your office can decide, or do you need direction from us? We can, um, well, the board can definitely advise me, but that is certainly an option for us. We discussed, uh, we've had a number of complaints from people not receiving notice of the foreclosure program. They don't receive notice until the lawyer gets involved, which at that time, fees are already assessed. Mm -hmm. We send the notices to the last address we have on record. Of course, we don't have the staff or expertise to go search and do title searches on properties, but we send it to the last address we have on record. Even use white pages to try to find even more correct addresses if we can return that. What we're looking at is possibly going and posting signs um, on the properties, on the door, taping it to the door, putting in the yard, whatever it may be, only on those that we get return mail on or have right. no contact. Right. That's an option we're looking at doing. And also, we discussed another alternative of um, listing maybe the pending or potential foreclosures on the website. No, Not, you're right. I, <laughs> I like the sign idea better. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, that's just a personal <laughs> preference. But I, I do know, I talked to you know several property owners just hypothetically. You know, and um, uh, addresses get crisscrossed and, and people move or you're dealing with heirs that are not even in Lee County. I mean, it's tough for you guys to chase folks down. And, and you know, I got a lot of positive feedback from posting a sign from the tax department. You know, that, you know, typically somebody goes by and checks on the property from time to time. And so once you start the foreclosure process and you get the return mail and you can't, can contact them by telephone or visit. You know, maybe the sign would be, you know, sort of a palatable way to go, and and just another avenue where you can tell them we've tried everything. You know, we can. Usually, somebody, a neighbor, or something, would be yes. on the phone calling you. So exactly. Somebody, so, somebody that would know how to get in touch yeah. with them. I thought you were contracting that process out. We are for the actual foreclosure process, but notifying the taxpayers. We try to notify the taxpayers as best we can prior to sending it to Zacchaeus Legal yeah. Services. That way they don't incur those attorney fees. We try to settle it in-house if at all possible. So we're, we're trying to post those signs to notify the taxpayer before it goes to the outsource company. That was Maybe just two fees. cents worth it. I'm glad that, you brought that up. That was a positive thing from folks that I talked to, that that would be a good avenue to go with. Well, and I did want to tell you, um, there were, when we hired you, there were a lot of concern about your age and the youth <laughs> that you brought to the table. But I'm telling you, I think you've done an excellent job. Absolutely. I'm proud of what you have accomplished in such a short period of time, and um, the power to you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Good job. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? I'd like to ask you, how much of your attorney workers have been housed? Any of it? Or you contract no, all the we, work we speak with Mr. Hull a lot, but as far as you talking about the foreclosure program, mm -hmm. well, when they get involved, I mean, we've got a list. Um, yeah, I'm talking about do you contract all that out? Once we we have to send the distribution. I think the first, well, starting October, we send it to every other month from then on out. So October, December, February, uh, we send it out. You know, if we haven't gotten, if we hadn't set up a payment arrangement with the taxpayer. We haven't gotten any notice from the taxpayer, then we'll go ahead and send that to Zacchaeus. So, um, Danette, you know about how many we've sent to Zacchaeus? Right off hand? Yeah, approximately. Well, I, well, I, I think, think he's talking about the actual contracting for yeah. the service, mm -hmm. service providers, like Zacchaeus, the lawyer, the, the firm, is what he's asking. Yeah. Is that done in house? But you do a RFQ, I guess you do. Well, yeah, we put out an RFQ before we started the process. Right. We tried to, you know, encourage local firms to. That's what you're using firm. outside the, uh, to the attorneys or whoever. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. how, how do you how do you arrive at like, who you use? Well, well, this firm is the only one to fill out an RFQ. We had one local firm um, contact me, um, Winstead's firm out here, but they didn't have any interest. They said it'd be, you know, too much staff time. And, and the firm that we chose does exclusively tax foreclosures. That's all they do. They're bidding it, just like you would do. Yeah. Right. They bid it out. We actually sent an RFQ to all of the attorney offices in Sanford. Right. We actually I mean, put, the, put the paperwork in the hands. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. 
So we did all we could do. Okay. Um, our charge and responsibility is to make a motion that says that we charge the tax collector with collecting the fiscal year 210 taxes, adopt resolutions, and accept settlement. And I'd like to make that in the form of a motion and ask if we could vote on that now. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. There is no opposition, so that's approved uh, unanimously. And I'd like to just say this. Uh, to sort of echo what Mr. Kelly said, uh, Mr. Brenson, it seems to me like we're seeing professionalism, good leadership, and very good results. And uh, you know, it makes us very proud, and we, we need that type of uh, attention to these kinds of details. And we thank you very much. I thank this board for giving me the opportunity. I really appreciate it. I love it here in Lee County. <laughs> Great. <laughs> thank you. Um, the next item is uh, Mrs. Lee's going to talk to us just a moment or bring to our attention the schedule for September and perhaps without having to get her up uh, the question is do we wish to hold a September board meeting uh, just one on, at 6 p.m. on Monday September the 21st as opposed to having two to sir it's been moved to approve that. Uh, all in, in any discussion? Yeah, and not have one this long. <laughs> <laughs> I told you right. we had one a month. The agenda was going to be like this. Mr. Crompton, can you fix that? I can try. <laughs> okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No opposition. That passes unanimously. Um, Consider a voting delegate for the annual NCACC conference, Mr. Crompton. Um, I think we have two commissioners going, is that correct? Um, Mr. Hayes and Ms. Dalrymple are going, so we need to pick one as the voting delegate. <laughs> well, I'd be happy to, but I'd be very willing to uh, uh, nominate you for that. In fact, uh, we can flip a coin. Move, <laughs> move to approve. You just nominated him. Yes, I did. All in favor, say aye. 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 In the form of a motion. All right. There you go. You got it. Okay. And again, the only thing that I ask is if we could get the business ahead of time you know, for our August meeting so that we could see what it is they're going to vote on before our August meeting. So we, if there's anything that's a red flag or particular interest to any of us, that we could maybe discuss that. So. Okay. We'll do our best. Coming around. <laughs> we are coming around the final stretch now. Um, Lisa Menta, Finance Director, adopt the Lee County Purchasing and Contracting Policy. Hi. Good evening. Um, at the last board meeting, there was quite a bit of discussion about our purchasing policy and our informal bid process. So we took this opportunity to tackle a task that had been on my list for a while to revamp our policy and develop a more detailed written policy. And what you have in your agenda starting on page 186 is our um, first round draft of this. Um, I'll be glad to entertain any questions or try to give you a quick synopsis. Um, on page 187, there is a summary there of what our purchasing policy will be. The biggest change to this from what we were doing before would be the informal bid process starting at $5,000, which has been our limit in the past for informal bids, which is below the $30,000 state requirement, we will be taking informal sealed bids. Actually, all of our informal bids will now be sealed. Um, part of the explanation for that is the state limit starts at $30,000. And with those bids, state law requires that, that from public records that those um, bids not be um, revealed until the contract is awarded. However, that does not come down if we lower the limit. So in other words, if we require informal bids at 5,000, those bids are open. So if I took a bid for something that was gonna cost $10,000 and said they were all due next Monday, if somebody called me on Wednesday and said who is bidded and what did they bid, I would have to disclose that. Okay, yes, by public records law. But by what they bid? You have to disclose what they've bid. Okay, if it's below that $30,000 state threshold. By requiring that they be sealed, 
They cannot be released until they are open. So they do become public records sooner, but you're not going to close them as of a certain day and open them as of a certain day. So you can't, unless you have to rebid, give somebody an advantage. So it's, it's going to be a little bit more cumbersome and it's going to be different. My intent is, once this is approved, is to bring all the staff in that handles purchasing for the various departments and explain everything to them. We have developed a rough draft of an informal, a standard informal bid sheet, and they will all be coming back into my office at appropriate dates and times, and will be opened in conjunction with those departments for anything between 5,000 and 30,000. The same process will work from 30,000 to 90,000. It's just not required at that point, okay? Um, we will continue to have um, bids for um, items over $20,000 to come back to this board for approval and award, and then we'll continue to follow the formal um, policies required by the state, over 30000 over 90000 for supplies and goods, and over 500000 for contracts for repair and maintenance type things. Okay. There's Questions? I have just one. I think you just answered. I want to make sure the formal bid procedures. Those are sealed bids, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And do we have a purchasing agent? You're looking at her. <laughs> okay. Uh, Lisa. On page 194 of my book, concerning change orders. Yes, sir. Uh, on contracts. Yes, sir. Uh, Change orders up to $20,000 can be approved by the county manager. Change orders up to $20,000 or more require approval by the board. This is on uh, contracts that have been approved by the board of commissioners. I'd like to see that change to change orders to be approved by the board. All change orders? All change orders. And what's the reason for that? Well, because I've seen change orders, uh, once you start with change orders, Sometimes <coughs> they're like a Rolling Stone to get them off. And, uh, Isn't there a cap on them? No, not on the contract. Well, it says change orders up to 20000 so you could make it cumulative per contract up to 20000 So if he has five, four that are 5000 each, that he right. could approve each of those. But then if the next one's $1,000, it would have to then come to you. Or you could require a report from him, kind of like we're doing for some of the purchase orders, um, that you be notified of any change order uh, approvals. Well, I mean, well, I've been on both sides of these things uh, as a working as a contractor, and I know how a contractor approaches a change order, and that's really not. I just, I just feel more comfortable with. If, uh, uh, I'm not questioning what you know. I'm asking how much of a problem are we having in that area right now? There's then. From the standpoint of construction contracts, we have been actually the contracting party in very few over the last few years. We have been paying a lot of contracts for the schools, for school right. construction, but you're not the body approving those change orders. Right. So we have had very little active change order process in the last few years. You're fixing to start the Stanley Dam project, right. which might could foresee some change orders there for the first one. time in a while. This is true on the engineering contract. I'm sorry. Right. Well, you got one, but what problem did it create? Well, it's none. But I think the taxpayers elected us to handle the money end of the for the county. They'd be the watchdog over the money, and that's that's what we have staff for. Staff's gonna look at it and then we'll approve it. Uh, is so it something we that we would? I mean, it's my amendment. Well, well, it's not. Well, the fact I, I'm thinking if, if it's a piece of you know a ten thousand dollar change you know, or a piece of carpet at the library or something, you have a, a change order. I mean, how I many? I don't want this to be something that's that's could be very monotonous to this board and take up time. Construction contracts is what I'm speaking of. Construction construction contracts, just like the dam, a road. If we decide to build a road. Well, what I mean, what you're saying is you you wouldn't want. I'm not interested uh, in a carpet contract, you know, but, but I, I, I might you fall would, into that whole thing. But you right. wouldn't want a change order though, $20,000 and then two weeks later $20,000 more. Exactly. So could we solve the problem to your satisfaction, as Ms. Minner said, by just changing and inserting cumulative up to $20,000 and then it having to come before us? I'm all right. I mean, 
I mean, I understand what you're saying. You know, I mean, you could you could have ten twenty thousand dollar change orders, and it'd be two hundred thousand dollars. Thing is, I trust I trust what he's going to. I do too. Bring whatever. I know a contractor loves a change order. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, here again, though, if he didn't bring because you're the board, guilty party, <laughs> you know, I think it would behoove him to CYA for himself to bring this board, even you know, that's that's one of those things where I yeah, you, 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 could you, also, you want it, I'll be glad to bring it to you. <laughs> you could also end up costing yourself more money though but by the timing of your board meetings mm -hmm. because just like now you're doing one a month, right? So if a change order comes in immediately yeah. following this meeting that has to come to this board, it could end up costing you more in the long run by having to hold it or until having the next call meeting. a special meeting right. just for one change order. That in too, and I know if uh, that all approve it, you don't collect. I, I would move that we appoint you to try, and if you find problems, then you're not about to vote. Um, well, you won't get a second from me on that. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, won't get one from me on yours. Actually, <laughs> we've got a motion on the floor to, I believe, to approve this with your amendment, amendment to that to the change order. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, any further questions? Now, was that with, with your amendment? Just okay. said just he said he was amenable to that. If I understood yeah. it, to make it, it would probably read cumulative um, change orders per contract up to twenty thousand dollars can be approved by the county manager, and it's under the section just for con contracts for construction or repair projects. All in, all in favor of the motion as amended and as just uh, described by Mrs. Metter, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Passage unanimously. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Okay, we're now at the manager's uh, report. Mr. Crompton. Uh, Ms. Mentor is going to start with the financial report. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's all right. <laughs> That's okay. Um, you have in front of you, and we started this time with the sales tax report. So if you want to go ahead and look at that, you will see that we have received our distribution for April. It was up slightly. Um, justification for it, I really cannot tell you because um, our Article 39 is down from last month, and our two Articles 40 and 42 are up. Have Article 44 is down. So the odds are, you know, across the state, we did a little bit better, but in Lee County, our sales are still suffering some. And which is also shown on page 198. When you look at the percentage change, we are seeing a much larger percentage drop in our Article 39 from last year than we are in the Articles 40 and 42. Article 41 shows a large decrease, remember, because we lost a half of that article um, to the Medicaid reform. One thing to remember is this October, we lose the last portion of the Article 44. In addition, one of the Article 40 or 42, and I can't remember exactly which one it is, but it's one of the two, will switch from being a per capita distribution to us to a point of sale. So based on what we've seen this year, that would also have an additional negative impact on our sales tax collections next year. Because we are seeing that our point of sale is suffering more. A year ago, we were kind of looking at a different situation. Lee County was kind of surviving. It looked like the downturn. And we were faring okay compared to the state level. And now we've kind of been the opposite way. Um, you know, I've looked at this. You can see right now, if you go back to page 197, that Article 39, we're only about 80% of what I projected we received. So um, I can tell you at this point, I don't think we're even going to make the projections that we had used during the budget process. I have redone numbers and um, given new projections to Mr. Crumpton. Um, I can either go over those now or go over, let him go over those with you later, whichever he chooses. But. Um, you know, I wish we had a crystal ball on sales tax, but the way the distributions are done, it is very hard to track and try to, you know, project what's going to happen in the next month or two. But you can't control those. You can just report them. That's correct. And so next month we'll perhaps uh, we'll see an improvement. Uh, we could hope. We could hope. 
back to school maybe. Yeah. Um, you know, school hopefully closed. a lot of people have shopped back to school. You know, Tramway did open this week. Um, I was one of the ones out shopping last Thursday night after the open house buying school supplies. But, um, you know, it's, and next month we'll have another rush of that with the college students going back next month and the regular schools opening. And by in Lee County. Exactly. Our best. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions? And on page 199 and 200 and 201, you have the monthly financial report. Um, there's not a lot to tell you. We did, um, we're a little bit ahead of where we were last year on Avalon taxes, just a very small percentage. And that number you may actually see come down a little bit when you actually get the audit report because some people go ahead and pay their next year taxes early and I have to take that off our books. We cannot, we cannot recognize that as revenue in an official capacity until the new year. So I will have to take that revenue back out. But it's, that's $100,000 in some, so it won't make a huge difference in their percentage there. Um, we're still lagging behind on investment earnings and other things. At this point in time, it does appear that all departments will be staying. It will stay within the budget. This is preliminary. Please remember that as you look at the we go over the projections with you, you'll see the number is different. The final number is different from this, and we will not have the final number until um, hopefully mid-August. I can give you an update. Final report will not the audit report will not be drafted by then, but you know I will be through making entries for revenues and expenses by then. And we'll give you another update. Questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, now, Mr. Crompton, you're going to speak to the amended renewal of. Microsoft Enterprise Agreement. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. This is an annual agreement that uh, we have to approve uh, to um, continue our license agreements with Microsoft. Um, there's really nobody else to do this with uh, but them. So, uh, you know, it's our license agreements for our serving and operating systems and all the uh, software that's on our desktops and laptops. So. The annual support agreement is $53,837. Okay, I move that this be approved as presented. Uh, questions? If there are no questions, all in favor of the motion uh, to support this, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No opposition. That's approved unanimously. And now, Mr. Crumpton, top five issues facing Lee County. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, part of the uh, the, the last financial report that this mentor gave you was, um, you know, where we ended up with revenues and expenditures and our statement of uh, where we ended up in our cash position. So we I, we did another projection today, or I should say, Miss Mentor did the projection for me. Um, and if you remember, when we uh, were going through the troubling times, we projected anywhere from. 2.6 million to 3.2 million drop in our fund balance, and that's when we implemented travel restrictions, hiring restrictions, hiring freezes, and uh, anything else, capital cuts, and that kind of stuff. So we were able to drop that estimate to about 1.3 million use of fund balance. So our estimated cash position is going to be um, fairly decent compared to what we projected. Um, about uh, six months ago. So um, we're projecting available fund balance as a percentage of general fund expenditures from the fiscal year that just ended at 17.27%. And that based on um, the next year's general fund expenditures to be at 18%. Whereas before we projected that we felt that we may be around 15 or 16%. So we've ended up in a little bit better cash position and uh, we have to thank the department heads and everybody who did what they needed to do to uh, cut, cut things back considerably. But, uh, you know, those were some good numbers I saw today, and I was pretty pleased with them. Um, <coughs> item two, um, and we already uh, discussed this a little bit about the state not passing their budget yet. Uh, we already know that we're out of balance from the ADM funding. Um, and. Uh, and we'll have to address that when they finally do pass their budget. Uh, I attended the BRAC meeting uh, with Mr. Paschal on June 25th. Mr. Bas Paschal also attended the executive board meeting last week. And uh, 
I, I will say this that was my first meetings since sometime back in 2008 that I had attended. Um, as you recall, Miss um, Price was attending uh, with Mr. Pascal and, and was keeping me apprised of what's going on. So I started attending again, and I was pretty impressed with um, you know where they where they stood in the timetable for completion um, was rolling along. Um, I, I, I was one of the doubters that you know saying that they'd never make the timetable that they had projected and. But they're, they're moving along, and the first significant move of personnel will be in October 2010, so um, you know, 14, 15 months away, uh, they'll be bringing the advance team uh, permanently to Fort Bragg. That's about 250 people. And then after that point, they will start uh, moving more and more people in. And uh, they're offering incentives to the employees down at uh, down at Forcecom and USARC to, to come up here and now they're estimating 40 percent of the people will, will move which means they still need 60 percent of the employees from the local area here. So you know, we don't have a lot of job prospects but right now but in 2000, late 2010 through 2012 the employment prospects down at, at the post, especially for some high-tech people who can use computers and that kind of stuff. There'll be a lot of opportunity down there. Uh, we have the last relocation fair in September, the 24th and 25th in Atlanta. And right now, um, we're sending Bob Joyce, Bob Hutes, and myself to that. Um, also, I was asked to attend as part of the uh, the board of directors to attend a meeting in Washington D.C. Uh, I don't know all these mil military jargons, but this is a big, this is the biggest Army military showcase that they have, um, and a lot most of the uh, industrial you know vendors who serve the military are there. So I was asked to attend that. We attended that with Mr. Hutes. Um, and then there's some other information about the, the I3D classroom and the Viper system, which is very exciting. Um, we'll get a good return on our investment if, if the state <coughs> comes through with uh, the, the money for the upgrade in the Viper system here. So uh, that'd be a big deal for us. Who's that coming from? Crime Control? That's coming from Crime Control. They're, they're in they're responsible for that and they're getting money through the federal government which they're allocating out so um, that's that's a big project item number four I don't you know hopefully everybody has seen some of the um, we do that, yes sir you, you may very well want to uh, consider a local person who can work for that for several years okay. uh, under item four the uh, transportation audit we had a maintenance audit um, which was unannounced and that uh, came as quite a surprise I don't know if if, uh, if you all saw some of the memos that went back and forth between uh, uh, Miss Davidson and in the DOT but Basically, we were not documenting our maintenance to their satisfaction. Satisfaction. So, we've had to take steps to do that and have an action plan in place to bring that back into compliance. So, um, uh, I know she was extremely worried about that and extremely upset, and they worked hard to get that back in in compliance. Um, and then, lastly, the Mid Carolinas Workforce Development Transition. Uh, I attended the meeting. Uh, of the Workforce Development Board, I guess it was almost two weeks ago. It was pretty exciting, <laughs> and uh, it seems that everybody's moving in the same direction now, even with a little heartburn. But uh, we're all going in the same direction, and CCCC is now um, the administrator of the 2009 grant year and serves as the staff support for the Workforce Development Board, and the transition is moving along. We're also in looking at taking over the youth workforce development program for Chatham 
and uh, Lee counties are doing it through the youth services department that's in our DSS department so it's an opportunity for us to aid some of those kids that we're already servicing and, and to get them jobs um, under more issues number one the Sandley Dam as was alluded I do have a change order here um, from Kim and Creed in the amount of forty five hundred dollars this is to do an analysis on the bridge that goes um, from the parking lot up to the campground. You know, we crossed the river right there, and it was noticed that um, by our staff, not their staff, that there was some cracking and uh, some concern about the stability. So um, we asked them to take a look and do some thorough engineering on it to make sure we don't have somebody driving across that and, uh, and it gives way. Um, so we're asking, you know, the, the board did approve this original contract at 99000 so they need to approve the uh, addendum of 4500 for this work to be done. But this is one you supported, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, this is one that we brought to the table, I would say, right. in Camden Creek. Right. We support this work. All right. So we're recommending approval. Move to approve. Shall we do you wish to vote on that? Uh, all right, let's let's do that. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Approved. <laughs> last the last issue is, uh, uh, you know, one of these issues where I, I think we would like to help. We just want to make sure that we're not setting a precedent and that everybody understands that. Uh, the main reason we're going to help the Boys and Girls Club is because we're already right there. They're located within our park and uh, we're already cutting the grass all around their building, just not right there. And we're talking about something that will take us less than 15 minutes to do while we're there. And it's just to cut the grass. They're still going to do their own landscaping if they have to do bushes or anything like that. But we have received a request from the Boys and Girls Club to cut their grass. and. Uh, you know, Mr. Spivey, who, who left, he, he was concerned. He wanted to make sure the board understood and approved that we were doing this for, for these folks. And, and I don't, I think this is just one of those things that we're right there and we're already you know, cutting grass around it. I don't, uh, all right, it's been moved. We'll, let's approve that. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. aye opposed? That's, that's approved. Well, they're giving us, you know, they're helping us with some in-kind stuff, too. So, uh, you know, this is one of those little give and takes. That's it for my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, commissioner's comments. Mr. Pascal, would you? <laughs> okay. Uh, Believe it or not, I'm at a loss for words, too. All right. It's been a long uh, trip to California. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, part of I, I, I'm with everybody else. <laughs> yeah. I'm tired of hearing this talk. Mr. Owen? Uh, we got a lot done. Yeah. Well, I got Ellie? some great house people. Mr. R? When we take a recess, before we go into the uh, closest. Uh, okay, let's. Uh, you want to? Sure. Yes, and we'll take five minute uh, recess. After. Okay. okay. Um, I'm going to go into closed session to consult with the county attorney to protect the attorney client privilege per general statute 143.318.11.83, and also to consider a personnel matter per general statute 143.318.11.86. Can we do that here? Can we do that in here? Yeah, we can do that here. You'd like. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. We'll be in closed session in this room in five issues.